All right, guys, guess what? We're going into Gold League 2587 MMR. Oh, sorry, 2450 to 2720 MMR. It's Gold League, Bronze to GM, and we've got a bunch of new skills to be teaching you. So let's start off by continuing the build order, and nothing My really man. changes in the build order except one small change for Zerg first. <laughs> the main thing we're going to be talking about is splitting off units. So let's start, guys. Build a drone. We want to add to control group one double tap make camera location get nigel we're going to put him on our army group for now send him across the map and then of course we want to build an overlord and this one is just going to go sit on the natural and then out front the natural using shift we build one more drone and then we've got a little bit of time till that overlord pops so let's go make camera location two camera location three camera location four Camera location, five. And then we can already be holding the drones down before the overlord. So if you don't get all those cam camera locations done, don't worry, guys. It's more important to go build these drones. And remember, you don't need to look at home to do that. You could be like over here about to make a camera location. You could stop, build the drones, and then go, and you know, and then finish making your camera location. So you can mix and match those just about getting that habit down. All right, build the hatchery. We're going to add to control group one, double tap make the camera location and let's build a bunch more drones here we want to go up to 18 supplies so three more drones now because there's a probe there if you guys want you can leave the overlord sitting directly above the expansion to see if they try to cannon rush you or like i said you can just send it out front up to you doesn't really matter too much at this point i think you know what we'll stick to not changing anything let's build the gas and pool so we'll just let the overlord queue because we put it out there in every matchup so let's keep that really standard okay guys Oh, I forgot to send my drone scout out, guys. So we're going to pull two drones off mining to simulate that. Oh, I knew we forgot something. Oh, no. Okay, so we're going to... We'll send him across the map and then queue him home. That's a bit later than normal, but it is what it is. All right, no worries. Oh, look at this, guys. I take a week off from Bronze to Jam. We do, we do one show a week to try to not make it too crowded on the schedule. And I've already forgotten to drone scout. Bad habits creeping in, but that's okay. We're at 20 supply. So let's build another Overlord. And remember, we want to click these overlords kind of out front our base. And of course, at 20 supply, we pause because we've got 20 supply. It's build an overlord and we rally to our natural. And then when the pool finishes, we go two queens and four zerglings. All right. And then we go back to droning afterwards. We can look at our scout and our scout tells us the buildings are on their side of the map. That's all we needed to know. Remember, are there buildings on their side of the map or not? And if they are, we can continue our build. Now, after the queens and the zerglings, we start zergling speed. Keep building drones. And we also want to grab this drone and send it to our third base. Because remember, 32 supply, we're actually going to be building that. And if you really want, notice we've already got our army on number two, drone on number three. So we can double tap there if we want. And we're up to 32 supply. We go inject. Good job there on... Uh, Jesus, what's her name, guys? What is wrong with me today? My brain is absolutely melting. Lizzie injects the main, Cersei injects the natural, and then we go third hatchery, so we don't do a macro cycle yet. We double tap, do the camera location, set the rally point, and then we get a third queen, Latifah's on the way, and another overlord as well. Once we've done all that, we build a few more drones until we get supply blocked on 36 up there. And what are we going to do after the 36 supply block? Oh, look at that, guys, an adept. Yeah, we might as well just A move that. Ignore it and just get into our first macro cycle. So Lizzie injects, Cersei injects, hold that drone key down and don't get distracted by this stuff, guys. Now, if there are units harassing you, obviously you might want to build defense. So I'll build a few lings and you might wonder, well, what's a rule for that? Well, let's build our extra overlords first because we didn't finish that previous macro cycle. Let's also get Latifah to spread creep and then go over there. And we go, oh, okay, that's a problem. So let's attack me with our queen. Now we want to build about six zerglings for every one of these units. Oh, there's an oracle, guys. So when you see an oracle, you want to run away with your drones. And we want to bring this queen up as well, okay? So we've A moved our queens towards the trouble. Now this is where you tunnel vision. You want to keep staring at it, staring at it, staring at it, staring at it. Just kidding, guys. Don't keep staring. Just A move your lings and then return your drones to mining. And then do a macro cycle. We've defended it. Inject. Where the hell are you, Cersei? Get back to your job. She's going to spread creep. And then using shift, tell her to inject. And then Latifah inject. And then we're going to hold that drone key down. Okay? So, that was an oracle. It came in very early, guys. What can we do to make sure this doesn't hurt us too bad? Let's build a spore in each base, okay? So that we don't take too much follow-up damage, all right? 
Now, we can also build a few more queens, but let's do a macro cycle first. Inject, inject, inject. Keep building drones. And that's going to be fantastic, okay? Just the macro cycle, minimum amount of APM for your defense, and then do a macro cycle. Minimum amount of defense, and then your macro cycle. So we can change the rally points as well. Notice this base is full, so we're going to rally that back up to the main. Time for another macro cycle. Inject, inject, inject. This is where it's really easy to stare at that pressure coming in and freak out. But we're not going to do that, guys. What we are going to do is, look, there's an oracle there. So we'll send a queen there and send a queen there. Okay. We'll also send this queen down here because there's an oracle there. We're going to get our zerglings. We're going to A-move the proxy stargate we've spotted. And then what are we going to do? We're going to keep staring at those things. No! Continue doing your macro. Okay. Now, we're going to need to build three more queens. Why? Because our queens are busy defending. Let's go inject, inject, inject. And notice those queens are off to the side. So that's kind of annoying. We're going to build drones. Oh, wait, we're a supply box. We're going to build like six or seven overlords here. No worries. And then we're going to do the next part of our build. Remember the next part of our build, guys? Second gas and baneling nest in the main. And of course, we want to keep droning. So let's do another macro cycle, guys. Inject, inject, inject. Hold that drone key down. And that, of course, is very annoying. So if someone keeps doing this sort of harassment, guys, what we can do is we can just build a spore there. Build a spore there, build a spore there. I think there's still an oracle back there, maybe. So we'll just do that to make sure. And then we can continue our build. Double Evo Chamber and Lair. What's the next bit, guys? Double macro hatchery. These are all the things that we were always doing. Awesome, guys. What's our drone count? We just need a few more drones here. We want to add the Evo Chambers to Control Group 6 is what I like to do. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, though. Shift 1 on those hatcheries. Time for another macro cycle. Lizzie, Cersei, and Latifa. And we're into nothing but Zergling production now, guys. And Overlords, of course, okay? So, what else are we missing? Well, we don't have our fourth and fifth base yet. So let's let's do that one. Fourth base, fifth base. Other than that, we don't have much map vision. So let's try and get used to getting map vision out there, shall we? So we're going to use that deselecting. Remember, right click, shift, left click. 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 So of course, we're not holding down shift the whole time. Only when I say shift there, we then click home and we go control two. So we just split a whole bunch of scouts out on the map and we see, oh look, they have a third base. Thank you very much Looking for the support for the tournament, to mate. Fist three. Let's make Skyzerg called Skerg for the future. Take care all and have a good time. Make melee, make carapace, make bane speed. Now keep in mind, how do they stay calm through this? I know that my opponent committed a crazy amount to get that oracle, that adept in as early as they did. Did they do a lot of damage? Yes. But I guarantee you they messed up their macro afterwards, guys. So if we just keep hitting our macro cycles, keep hitting our injects, Thanks keep pumping zerglings, I know it's going to be very hard for them to stop. And now we're going to start to do our first big gold league thing, guys. So we're going to control click these zerglings in our army and we're going to go... Alt 7. We're going to put these on a backstab key. And its job is to just wait in the bottom of the map, okay? Ready to backstab him. And the rest of our army is now still producing as normal. But notice they're on separate control groups. And look at that. Look what they found. What did they find here? Pylon. Awesome. We're not sending them in. We're just waiting down here in the bottom of the map, ready to do a backstab, okay? Inject, inject, inject. Build more lings. Now, we've got a lot of queens, guys, so let's actually add these to our queen control groups. We've got one there. Remember, we've got this control group here. This one, add that, so shift four. And we've got one of these queens as well, shift four. So that's four queens, and we can send them out front to get rid of the oracle so my opponent doesn't see when I'm coming to attack. And because they all have lots of energy, because these queens haven't been injecting, you can also, remember we've got that big queue up of injects. If you've got extra queen, on, queen energy, and this will happen a lot once we're in Platinum League and further on in gold, you can queue up inject. So what you do, just hold down shift inject, click a whole lot of times on both of these hatcheries. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Inject, inject, inject. Build zerglings, add to control group. And now guys, guess what? One, one and baneling speed are finishing. So let's do it. Let's make banelings here. And let's get ready to attack. 
And in Gold League, we're always going to attack two sides at once. And I know you don't know how to multitask. Guys, at what point have I multitasked in this show so far? Don't worry. You guys wouldn't have noticed that. I noticed that. We're not going to notice that. Thankfully, my opponent's silly and is going to show that in a bad time. So we're going to go for a big attack here. Oh, my. What is what is that? What's this attack warning? Oh, that there is DTs, guys. So what we're going to do is I'm going to build a lot more Zerglings. And we're just going to rally them to this base. And we're going to make Overseer there as well. But, inject, inject, inject. Keep building units, or lots of overlords, in fact. And I'm not going to pull back my attack, because my opponent showed those Dark Templar on an unimportant expansion. What we're going to do, guys, is we're going to A-move this army, and then quickly grab number seven and A-move the natural, okay? And that there, we're not... That's a two-pronged attack. It's going to do great. Hands off the keyboard, by the way. I'm just... I'm not going to select anything. We're just watching what happens. Now, notice those guys could have been clicked right into that wall to do lots of damage, right? They could already be in the base killing everything, but they're not. That's kind of a bummer, but this is what happens. What are we going to do instead? Well, it's totally okay to micro. So let's grab some units and click them in the base. Grab some units, click them in the base. Grab this army, click it in the base. I don't know where his army is right now. Oh, there it is. Looks like it's come home. So we're just going to A-move here. If I want, I could try to move past, and that'll get the Thanelings in the middle, and then I can A-move. But he actually blinked back, which is a really good dodge. So once again, move past, and then aim. Notice the Banelings get on top rather than just being stuck behind. Awesome. Now notice what we did as well. We built Zerglings in detection. He could have run in and killed this base and all those workers. But eventually, the Lings and Overseers and Broodlings and Queen and stuff would have defended the Dark Templar that came in. We may have taken massive economic damage, but... I was so set up for my attack, I wasn't willing to pull cool home and ruin my attack for that, right? So, <laughs> just attacking two places at once is going to be legendary. And if we do a little bit more micro with those attacks as we get better at it, like if those lings on the left click straight into the base and split into these two worker lines, even if my opponent had an army to deal with it, we would have killed all of their economy. And then we lose our army, but they have no economy, and they basically have to come kill us with an all-in attack. And they're not able to, right? Because we're mass producing Lings and Banes at home. We'll, we'll be able to defend whatever counterattack comes on creep. And we should be doing really well. <clears throat> now, obviously, <clears throat> don't watch the fight. Do that in the replay. Instead, you should inject your hatchery, says Dank Manic. Well, that's the funny thing. You do need to build fight experience. I don't want you guys to not look at the engagements. I just don't want you to stare at the engagements in panic, right? And really focus on one side of the engagement because you're not going to be able to bounce between both sides to really micro both. So just choose one side. If you like focusing on the counterattack, the backstab, and clicking those lings in and letting your main army just do whatever it does, go for it. If you like doing it the other way, let the backstab do whatever it does and then click the main army in and micro it a little bit, go for it. The important thing there is to make sure that we, uh, we actually, you know, commit to our attack timing at a moment where hopefully our opponent doesn't have 400 Archons and Colossus up just yet. How did you do the thing where you stole a bunch of Zerglings and made a new group? Great question, Fallen Artorius, and that's why we're going to talk about it. So, guys, you guys know I use the core. I use a very uh, weird advanced hotkey setup, and that's because I've done something very special. First things first, you've got normally in your menu, create control group buttons, which is like control one is the default, select control group you select number one right we, we can let, let's look at some standard hotkeys just to show you guys so standard hotkeys check it control one makes army group one press number one select army group one shift one add to control group one real standard hotkeys but if you scroll down here in your menu you've also got create control group one and take away units or add to control group one and take away units these are what we call control group stealing this is the best mechanic ever. They didn't add it to Legacy of the Void. I wish they added it earlier. It's so bloody good. Let's go look at our document, guys. If you go to the document, if you're watching on YouTube, it's in the description. Check down there. There's only one change to the build. We'll talk about that later. Just below that point. Control group stealing, splitting army off control groups using alt. So the default for this is rather than using control or shift, you use alt and a number and that will steal. So I'm usually going to call that alt or stealing whenever I'm playing, but there is another option. So you can either get used to using alt guys to steal units off, totally fantastic mechanic. 
You can also use spacebar, remember? Remember what I talked about? You guys can set up spacebar as a dumping key. So if you don't wanna really put units on a control group so much as you just wanna remove them from your army and click them off to do something, you can use a dumping key where we can instead of create control group 10 takeaway units, we can just be like, oh, space. And then basically I could just box 20 zerglings. So if we do this, right? All I need to do, box these zerglings, press spacebar, click them off. They're gonna be removed from my army key, right? So this is my army. I can just grab these guys, press spacebar, click them off to do something. They're gonna be on no control group anymore. So that's a really cute mechanic. Some people like to use up to you if you wanna use that one. Like I said, you don't have to by any means. Um, what I actually use is something very different. And this is something I would highly recommend, but it's up to you guys. So we're gonna go over it very quickly here. If you guys want to, you can remove the ability to create control groups completely. Remove the ability to add to control groups completely. This is the hotkeys that I play with. It takes a little bit of, it has a few small downsides, especially for people who panic at their keyboard, which we'll go over, but it makes things much easier to learn. Now, obviously I use very weird buttons because I use the core, I use the right side of the keyboard. I don't recommend using these actual letters and numbers but in terms of instead of using the regular control and shift keys the add and control you can take them and put them down here so you can make create and add you can use those instead so the way you would do that we'll show you on a standard setup because i know otherwise people's brains will hurt and they'll get confused is you go down here and let's say we want to use control group stealing always so Essentially, what this means is anytime I make a control group, I'm also removing them from any other control group. That's how my mechanics work as a player, and I like it. If you guys feel like doing it... All right, so check that out. What have I just done, guys? What I've done is I've gone and used the same buttons that are normally up here, create control group one, and instead I've taken those same hotkeys and just put them on the create control group and take away units. So control one... I'm not just creating control group, I'm also taking away units. And we can do the exact same thing for the add to control group. Rather than alt shift one, make it shift one, shift two, shift three, shift four, shift five, shift six. Oops. Oh my God. <laughs> you gotta be real careful on that. <laughs> Don't accidentally just press shift. That's why we canceled that, guys. <laughs> We just got rid of the ability to shift things. If you actually, I'll show you, how, I'll show you guys how to fix that. If you, if you do it. So, so say you're doing that right. We go shit. Oh, I accidentally hit shift. We just removed the ability to queue up commands. So if you guys do anything, that's totally okay. You can still accept the changes. And what you want to do is you just want to go back into your hotkeys, unbound, <laughs> and you want to find. Uh... Oh, actually, wait, really? Did that not get rid of anything? Oh no, okay. That didn't seem to actually remove shift. Oh, I guess shift is just so built into the engine you can't actually remove shift. So I think that's actually okay. I think that's fine, funnily enough. But just check here to see if there's anything that's like all messed up for you and you'll be okay. For me, it's all the F buttons are messed up because these are my observing hotkeys and uh, that'll do it for you. Oh, unit management. UI, yeah, none of that matters. No, that's all good. Jump to last alert, not important. All good. So you can always just check the unbounds to make sure you didn't mess anything up too badly. But anyway, if you guys go do that, it'll end up looking something like this, where when you go to your camera locations, uh, your, your control group, sorry, you've got all red. These are just all normal, all red. And then these ones should be just your normals. So if you guys want to do that, go for it. If you have any questions about it, you can feel free to reach out to me. It's pretty basic to set up though. Um, it's not very complicated. So what are the downsides, Pig? What are the downsides? If you guys want to set up those hotkeys, well, I've written them down here. So basically the downsides are you can't have overlapping control groups. So a unit can't be on more than one control group at a time. The other one is if you fat finger your army onto a key, you'll have accidentally removed it from the group you're expecting it to be on. So people often do this where they're like panicking and they accidentally put all the hatcheries onto their army key and then they go to select the hatcheries and it doesn't select anything because of course they stole it away from the hatchery key. And if they do that, they then need to slow down, select their army, find the hatcheries, control click them, add them back to the hatchery hotkey. So this punishes you a bit if you're spamming your keyboard. Now, generally spamming your keyboard miscellaneously like that is gonna cause a lot of problems anyway if you're just kind of smashing it. So it's a good thing to realize if you're not a disciplined player, if you are a panicky keyboard spammer, you don't see yourself ever changing or getting past that. 
You don't need to use this. This is just for the hardcore nerds who are very methodical and really, really like to uh, optimize things. And if you like the sound of using this, you can use it as well. I always like to give you guys the options of doing things exactly the way I do it. But of course, I do it in a very specific control group setup and do it in a very advanced way. So don't just copy what I do blindly, only copy it if it makes sense to you. All right, guys, so that was control group stealing in a nutshell um, and some of the options you have available for it. I think it's really fantastic for us to always just get used to once we here in Gold League start pumping Zerglings. Notice at this point in the game, once we are pumping Zerglings, look at my production tab, you're gonna see big rounds of Zerglings coming out. What do we do? We grabbed our whole army <clears throat> and we just went Alt 7 and clicked it across the map, waiting down here to do a big run by later on. And even then, if our opponent moves out with a scary attack, remember, when our opponents do scary attacks, our answer with Ling Bane has never been to fight it front on immediately. It's always been to backstab and counter attack and go behind them. And this means we're gonna have such a head start on that because our Lings are already out there hiding in the corner of the map, which is fantastic. Is there a way to shorten your keyboard delay from the initial click until successive reclicks? If I hold the key down. Yeah, you can go into the Windows registry. If you go into the RegEdit analysis, I actually showed this at the very start of the previous video, so check it out. If you if you want to make it even faster, just keep in mind it means when you're typing, you're going to like be like, you're trying to type hello, and it's like, hello, and you didn't even realize you held the button down. It's going to be a bit crazy. Yeah. Nopix Cougar says, the only downside I have is it's not possible to have West three queens, East three queens, and injecting queens can't exist on a single third hotkey. Oh, you're using double queen control groups, Nopix Cougar? Yeah, that takes a bit of getting used to. You, you generally use a third army group for one of those set of queens, because you only need two sets of queens, usually for the first like eight minutes of the game, which is at the point where your army is only on one control group. By the time you need a second army group for muters or infestors or something like that, you can easily just go, oh, put all the queens on one control group to simplify things because I don't need queens covering. I've got an actual army now. So that's what you'll see all the pros do is they'll have their normal creep defense key and their injecting key for queens. And then, and some of them don't even have the injecting key, myself included. And then they'll be like, oh, second or third army group is also extra queen hotkey. Um, just for temporarily in the early game. I use seven, eight, and nine. On your keyboard, he F hitting seven, eight, nine, that's very far to the right. That's crazy. Hope you got those piano fingers, mother trucker. If you got those piano fingers, I'm sure you're fine. If you don't, oof, that's going to be tough. All right, guys, we're getting into another game here versus, I believe this is a gold one Protoss player. And my hotkeys aren't on, so let's... Uh, I was just showing you guys those little hotkey things. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go back. Build a drone. Build an overlord. Send him over the natural. We're doing this a little bit quicker because I was not paying attention at the start. Nigel, go sit above the base. Build one more drone. And all right, double tap. Make camera location. Camera location two. Camera location three. Camera location four. Let's hold down the drone key because about 30 seconds is when that overlord pops. Camera location five. Camera location six. All right, guys, let's send our drone across the map to scout. And let's grab another drone and build this hatchery, okay? So we're actually remembering the drone scout this time, something I haven't done in a long time in my own games in GM. And a lot of people get annoyed when they see drone scouts because if they don't see pros doing something, they assume it must be bad, but it really is not. There we go. Add to camera, lo camera location two, guys. Set the rally point. Once that hatchery is down, we want to build more drones and we want to go gas and pool. So 18 supply, we build two more drones here. Remember, we built three in the previous game because we messed up the build order. Let's put the gas, trying to make the spawning pool, guys. And there we go, got enough money for that spawning pool. All right, so then we want to build three drones for the gas. Check it out, guys. His building's at home, that's all we need to know. We just know that we're not being proxy barracks because the barracks is at my opponent's base. That's it, continue doing the build. People always say, how do I react then? Most scouting is not about reacting to things. It's about not reacting to things. <laughs> so don't ever react to anything, guys. Just follow your baseline unless you really need to not. Let's build another overlord. We'll stick this guy out here. Build another drone. And because we're at 16 on minerals, three on gas, we can set the rally points down here on the natural, guys. All right, so we're waiting for the pool to finish. Remember, what are we gonna do? Two queens, four zerglings. So queens first, queen, queen. 
four zerglings and we're going to control two of those zerglings make sure we put that egg on a control group keep building drones and remember what's what's first after queens and zerglings ling speed very nice we've got ling speed on the way guys keep building drones our overlord on the other side of the map is just sitting there so we're going to send nigel back to a pillar so he doesn't just die it's probably going to die that's fine and we're going to grab this drone go and take our third base so we've already clicked him to the pillar. So what are we going to do, guys? We're going to stare at this and mess up a build. No! Stop staring at things. Ignore, ignore, ignore. Keep building drones. All right, let's go. Lizzie, Cersei, inject, inject. Third base. And then we want to go third queen. We're going to get Latifah and then an overlord. Now, technically, we should go overlord first. But we're not going to. Because we're still learning. And it's better to just follow an order and do things correctly in the order we're used to. So we can build the queen, then the overlord. And then, of course, because we're supply blocked, we're going to build another Overlord. Click down this side. Remember, I'm using the minimap, guys. Get used to using the minimap. Overlord. I've already got my mouse where I want the Overlord to go. Select Hatchery, Build Overlords, right click. Time for another inject. Let's go! Lizzie inject, Cersei inject. Hold that drone key down. Obviously, our drones are a little bit behind, but we're just holding the drone key down, waiting for these extra Overlords to pop out. And you know what? Supply block was annoying, but not the end of the world. Now, while we're just chilling, let's grab our Zerglings. And what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to send some scouts. So right click, shift, left click. Right click, shift, left click. Right click, shift, left click. And come home and remake our control group. Guess what? That took a lot of time, which means it's got to be time to inject. Let's go to the main. Oh, we're a little early. Lizzie inject. Cersei inject. Hold that drone key down and build some overlords as well. Now, I only got to build one overlord there, so we'll need to build a few more. Latifah shows up on the case. She's going to inject and go to that third base. Let's build a few more overlords after doing that. So remember, that's a habit, guys. If I didn't build enough overlords, we do another task, spread, creep, inject, and then we build more overlords because we know more lava will have popped out by then. So that's kind of the habit that you guys were witnessing there, okay? Next up, we go second gas, baneling nest. Before we, we've got to fix up that saturation, put a pin in it for now. Inject Lizzie, inject Cersei, inject Latifah. And because we're on two base saturation now, we've done the, the, the Baneling Nest gas, remember? We built a big round of safety Zerglings, guys. Control click, add them to number two, and then build some more Overlords. And now time to fix up that saturation. So let's rally to the third. Let's grab some drones from this base, click them on the gas. We can do that. Deselect three using shift click, click in the main. Look at that. Isn't that nice, guys? Beautiful. Natural saturated. And don't do this. Don't do what I was just doing. Use your camera locations. Camera one, camera two, camera three. Okay, bases are looking healthy, guys. Inject Lizzie, inject Cersei, inject Latifah. Let's hold that drone key down. Build some more overlords. And I kind of feel safe because if I get glance at my minimap, I know if there's an attack coming. And he sends a marine. That's fine. I'm going to A move down. Shift, D select two links. Come home. He's doing it again. A move down, shift D, select two lings, come home, control two. How dare you try to wrestle map control from me, you poo head. Let's do another macro cycle. Inject, inject, inject. <laughs> now you can see I only need a few drones here, guys. The rest will be zerglings and overlords. And guess what? We haven't done evos yet or lair. So two evo chambers plus a lair. And what else happens, guys? You guys know what happens. Baby needs some hatcheries. We've got to spawn some of those baby little lavas out. That's right, guys. Shift one. Very nice. All right, what else? Well, we need a fourth and fifth hatchery as well. Let's build a fourth hatchery, a fifth hatchery. Oh, look at that. The escalation. I sent two lings to kill the marines, so my opponent sends two marines to kill the zerglings. Don't get distracted. Keep injecting. Inject Lizzie, inject Cersei, inject Latifa. Lots of zerglings. And if we really want, we can go scouting with our army, clear those marines up and get vision again. This is really dangerous because if you look away, you could run into his army and lose your whole force. So I don't recommend scouting with your army. This is in fact something I make fun of noobs for all the time. Let's control click, a zerg shift click a zergling, run away, remake our army group and do another inject. Inject, 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 make more zerglings. And guess what guys, one one upgrades. Baneling speed. Let's grab the fourth base. Oh, sorry, that was the fifth base. So fourth base, sent to the camera location. Fifth base, sent to the camera location. Set the rally point. This guy keeps killing my scouts and fighting me and stuff. All right, we need a run by squad. So guys, we're going to take these guys. Alt, seven. 
And because he's coming down the left, we're going to queue those to go... Oh, is he attacking me? He's not. We're going to hide in the corner of the map with those guys. And then we're going to pull back really far with our army. Make sure our rally point's back here in the natural. Inject, inject, inject. And we're going to build lots of Zerglings and Overlords. Now, I would like to run by with those guys, right? But our main army still needs to be able to fight. So let's make lots of Banelings. And remember, when 1-1 and Bane Speed finishes is a natural attack timing for us anyway. We can hover over our work account, or you can check the bases. And you can see, okay, we're pretty healthy, but we're missing a few drones in the main. If you really want, you could replace them, but it's not high priority. Macro cycles are everything. If I keep spending my money, I will win this game. If I start getting afraid of where's the army, where's the army, where's the army, and miss macro cycles, I will lose the game. Inject, inject, inject. Mass Zergling, control click, shift two. And guys, we don't even need to build overlords after two more. So we're going to build two overlords. And remember, every time we build overlords, we click them in the back. But look at that. Two overlords. We never need them ever again. Okay. So right now, let's get some scouts out. Right click, shift left click. Right click, shift left click. Pull back, make control group. And we just saw an army there. Okay. But remember, losing these edge bases doesn't really matter. Let's send a Ling there, see if he's still there. Shift. We make army. And the army is there, guys. So I think what would be a really good idea is if we A move from here, we'll attack around a corner, clump up really bad, and get our stuff Mutation. annihilated. We're going to do it anyway, though. Are we? No, let's not do that, guys. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go for the backstab, I think. And then we're going to attack the left side at the same time. Are we going to do that? No, we'll fight front on, actually. We'll keep it simple. I think you guys won't be able to make that choice because you're going to freak out a bit. So we're going to send the run by him. I've A moved it. And while that's distracting him, let's try and jump on his army. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to move to the right so I can attack from here in the open. And his army's no longer there. So, <laughs> Oh, there it is. Okay, let's try and chase him home, guys. Chase, chase, chase. Get him. Get him. Now, my Banelings are really far behind. So that's a very risky engagement. But because his army was kind of disorganized, we feel okay. We're then going to move past and then A move. And now we can A move into the main base. But notice I've got nothing there killing him. So what you could do is you could box some units, click them over to the third. And here, remember, you want to click your units on the wall. Otherwise, the Banelings won't blow up on a wall or buildings on their own. So it's really important you tell them to do that. Now, some people would say, why don't you just turn structure attack on autocast? You can't, guys. You can't. There's no auto cast for that. You wouldn't want to use it anyway, because they'd blow up on random things. And there we go. GG well played. The explosive power of the Baneling. GG well played to Mancardo. And uh, a nice, smooth, simple game there, where he's a little bit afraid to push and force the fight. And that Ling run by absolutely devastated. It did wild, wild amounts of damage. Pig, where's the creep spread? We're in Gold League, guys. If you're in Gold League and you're really focused on creep spread, um, guess what? Creep spread is really important in StarCraft. Like, it is so good for Zerg and so good for Ling Bane. How much energy do we have on our queens? 134 on Lizzie. Cersei, 134. Latifah, 126. Now, what does that tell us? That means I missed five lava injects. 25 lava per inject. I missed five lava injects on these queens. I'm floating 6,000 minerals. This tells me I could do way better with my macro cycles. I could spend my money a lot better. And I could focus better on hitting my upgrades earlier as well. All that sort of stuff. What time did I hit, guys? Pretty late, right? Let's benchmark it. Remember, we were benchmarking in bronze and silver. Don't tell me we've gotten even worse with our benchmarks in gold. I think we might have. Now, partially, it's because obviously our players will put more pressure on us. We're talking about a few new skills. And you'll naturally slow down on things as you're talking about those skills. But we didn't really fight until past nine minutes. So let's go take a little look-see at our benchmarks from the previous episode and see how we did. Benchmarking. All right, all right. All right. So, uh, okay, cool. And then we can we can add up here, right? We can go gold league. <laughs> so what do we do? When do we hit 54 drone three base saturation? And 1-1 uh, one, one bane speed timing as well. Gold league. So I think this was about nine minutes. Uh, I mean, we didn't even hit with that much. We basically did a, a 50 Ling backstab. What was this? 39 Zergling backstab. And then we fought the army on the front. 
let's say at this point we were ready to fight if there was an army there. So at 915, we had 118 Zerglings and 45 Banes. Let's write that down. 115 Lings, 45 Banes, 9 minutes 15. All right. That's that's okay. Uh, it's a lot less Zerglings, a few more Banelings than that Gresfin game in Bronze Silver. Fair enough. Uh, let's check our drone count. Were we hitting that drone count at 530? Three base saturation. Let's take a look. Remember, at 5:30 we want to have three mineral lines and two gases all full of drones, and it looks like we did pretty much hit that. We were a few drones short on the third, but a few drones higher on the natural and the main. So yeah, about 5:30 we were at 54 workers total, which is not too bad. 5:30, 54 drones total. Not too bad, right? Um, and this is obviously Royal Blood. But I think we were much worse in the previous game because we took a lot of damage from Oracle Adept. However, that's okay. Remember, if we took a lot of damage from Oracle Adept, like, that's totally fine. Oh, no! I took a bunch of damage. But your opponent also invested in that damage, and their economy is much slower as a result. So... A general rule is like, they did a bunch of damage, but they committed really hard. You can like just basically add a minute or take a minute away from your timings to, to kind of uh, make up for that. Do you manually detonate your Banelings? You just A move them. But if you want to get them in the middle, notice we move our army past the enemy army and then A move it to try to get them in the middle of their units a little bit more. So they're not all just blowing up on single units on the front. Yeah, we weren't using control group stealing for the uh, shift D selecting. No, that's just, that's standard shift D selecting, guys. Is there an option to give another a unit other instructions such as move or attack that also removes it from the control group? What's the best way to do that? Yeah, you give that order first. What you, that's, that's exactly, I mean, what we were doing here, right? Where we're sending, oh, this is, this is a good question. So how did I, how did I tell those Zerglings to kill those Marines early on in this game, guys? Look, here's my Zerglings. Let's look at that little interaction. So he sent these Marines out. So what did I do? I sent out two Zerglings, but they weren't just right clicked. It was an A move. It's the exact same order of operations. Once you guys understand what we're doing with cloning as a whole, you can understand this much better. So if we watch, watch what I'm doing here, right? Okay, so we get one of our Zerglings killed in a moment. So what do I do? I select my whole army, I attack move, I shift deselect two Zerglings, and then I send my Zerglings home and I remake my control group. The only difference here to sending a single scout out is instead of just right clicking it, I A left click it on the map and then deselect two Zerglings. Because remember, all you're doing when you're doing this deselecting is you're giving everyone the command and then you're removing whoever you want to keep that command from your selection. That's all this is. And we had a fun little dance where my opponent kept clearing my scouts, so I would send more to deal with him. Did the exact same thing on the left side. I A move two Zerglings, remake my control group, pull back home. And we just did that over and over again. So that's really very effective. It's just a nice way of splitting units off. I don't know why they call it cloning. I usually call it, I used to always call it shift deselecting. I think it's just you're you're using the command from all, people people used to insist they're like that's cloning that's cloning every time I'd talk about shift deselecting they'd be confused. Nowadays everyone's like why is it called cloning that's a dumb term just call it shift deselecting. I I'm like god damn it I just can't win. I can't win. <laughs> it literally used to be the opposite. I used to always call it shift deselecting because that's literally just describing the buttons you're using. And then people are like, now it's cloning. And now it's the opposite. People are like, shift deselecting makes way, way more sense. I'm like, god damn. It is what it is. But uh, all right, guys, let's take a look at Linkardo. So Linkardo didn't wall off, which is a big problem. The only other problem here is that Linkardo committed very hard to two base, but didn't really commit to a big attack. So what Linkardo could really do to evolve their play here is definitely make sure they remember concussive shells because they're going very Marauder heavy. And uh, if you're going to play uh, this sort of style, you know, you're, you're basically going three barracks on two base. You might as well have an earlier fourth and fifth barracks. Really be queuing up a lot more units. Notice there's a lot of money floating, so there should be a lot more Marines and Marauders queuing. Don't be afraid as a low-level player to queue up two Marauders, four or six Marines each time you do it. Um, to build extra production. And also, guys, why the hell is Gary working on his own? Once you get past, like, one barracks, one factory, once you're on more than one barracks, like, you need to have Gary and Bruce going from about 50 supply. There should be two SCVs constantly building those depots. And this should all be tied together. 
right? But instead it's like, hey, I'm building a depot here. Wait, wait, why is Bruce there and Gary's there? That makes no sense, guys. This is classic low level play, making things harder for yourself than you need to. Why would you need to go to two separate areas to build depots? Now people will say, but I see Maru do this all the time. Maru has unlimited APM and actions. Him and top pro gamers are incredibly chaotic in what they do. It makes them good and on off the fly chaotic situations. But you guys did not have the APM to do that. So why would you be building depots in two separate places? Makes no sense, right? Why are we queuing up units in separate cycles? Right now, we aren't building any bio units, right? What's going on? And that's something else. If you're floating money, you should be queuing up even more depots and even more units. So you should be like, all right, I'm gonna make friggin' six Marines, four Marauders, two tanks, four Medivacs. I'm, I've got money, so we're gonna make a third command center and four more barracks. Like, you know, there's, there's no such thing as producing too much stuff here. But also we haven't been dropping mules. So you can tell that if Linkado was dropping mules, there'd be two mules from the main, soon to be a third one, and two mules from the natural. How much is a mule in terms of mining? 225 minerals, four and a half marines. If there are four mules that have not been dropped that could have fully mined by this time, that's, what is that, 17 marines? 17 marines. So Linkado could have 17 more marines at this point, not counting the third command center. That's another eight marines, 800 minerals in the bank. That's another 16 marines. So Linkado's shy about 30 marines of where they could be at this point in the game. And if they had 30 marines complementing this army, holy crap. Imagine if that army was hitting me right now. What do I have, guys? I have a pack of Zerglings and one Baneling. One little Waddley boy. I'm going to struggle really hard. If he moves up and pre-spreads an army out here and then just pokes a few Marines forward until I attack into it, that's I mean, he's going to annihilate me. So Linkado could have committed much harder to a two-base timing. The big problem I see with Linkado's play is there was no attack at any point in the game. And this is what I always teach in Bronze Jam. There always has to be an attack, guys. So get in there always have an attack timing because this is a pretty decent army that's being built for gold league but if you don't do anything with that army if you don't have a set timing you're working towards it's very hard to improve but if you have me do dumb roach attack me hit with stim and combat shields and first two medivacs coming out whatever that rule is get over there be aggressive and you will absolutely cause me a lot more trouble Okay guys, so we're just gonna take a quick break from my own games to take a look at this game and the reason is we have Realm down here who's a silver Terran player and has never actually played Zerg. Uh, and this is their first ladder games, uh, one of their first uh, doing it. They did their placements with Zerg, trying to apply the bronze to GM from last week's episode, the bronze silver. And uh, obviously they didn't do it anywhere near perfectly and they were struggling with it. And uh, we're just gonna take a quick glance through at a few of the points uh, to kind of see what's going on. So uh, one of the main things, of course, first things first is you do need to be adept at using replays. I'm not gonna go through any of the advanced replay analysis techniques, but first of all, whenever you're leaving a game, guys, don't click score screen, always click rewind game. Start getting in there and getting used to looking at replays. Next thing, if you want this interface, you can download it, it's called Game Art, but using any of the other interfaces is totally fine, guys. Doesn't really matter which interface you use. You can see I've downloaded a whole bunch of different ones that you can apply. Um, you'll have to reopen a replay after you apply it to, to get that to load. The main thing though is to get used to your basic hotkeys. Now the number of people I've coached who say they're really trying hard to improve but can't seem to get any better, and I look at how they're playing and I go, show me, okay, analyze a replay, break down what's going on, and they don't know any of the hotkeys, and I can tell they don't spend a lot of time in replays. And I was explaining this before the stream today, but if you don't look at your replays, guys, it's like doing a kickboxing class and being like, man, I'm trying to get really better, I don't know why I keep losing my fights. And you're never friggin' Thanks looking the in the mirror products. and actually checking that you're kicking properly. And instead, you go, ah, ah, and you're like, yeah, man, I keep doing a perfect roundhouse kick. I don't know why it's not working. You said a roundhouse kick was good for this situation. The f you're not doing a roundhouse kick. You literally, you need to look in the mirror and make sure you're doing techniques correctly. You need feedback on your form and any physical activity. And same in StarCraft, you need to check that you're actually applying the systems, the build, and doing things correctly. And I guarantee you, you're not. Why? Because no one can play StarCraft perfectly. It's a game with unlimited room for improvement. So learning to look at replays is a very, very vital, vital skill. God damn, that's a CD emote in the Twitch chat. So first things first, D, production tab. But your default key is D for production, U for units. This is on standard hotkeys, all right? I think this is essential because you should always be tabbing between these because they tell you what's going on. Oh, I'm making link speed. Oh, I've got a bunch of idle lava sitting there. 
And you can always tab between those. Now, not just that, what about in the replay? Guys, if you don't already have this bar up here or down here, wherever it is, press Control Shift O to bring that overlay up. And you can click this back. You can, oh, I missed something. Let's go back and check. Oh, what happened? Did I, wait, did we remember to build the Overlord at the start of the game? Get used to doing that. P is pause as well. Don't be afraid to pause. If you guys watch me analyze a replay, I'm constantly pausing, playing, pausing, playing. Not just that, but we're also plus equals fast forward. Notice how that goes eight time, up to eight times speed or the way down to slower than game speed, normal speed. Faster speed is the game speed that you play on. You've, so you've got plus, minus, P, D, and U. These are the hotkeys you need to be using all the time to analyze your replays. It'll make you such a better player. Now, let's see how Realm did, guys. Realm's, uh, Realm's analysis says, uh, oh, <clears throat> you know, I, I had a replay. Oh, I did placements. Look, I, I had a game against a Zerg that went Roach Hydra. The biggest problem was I didn't have camera locations and trying to do it through screen panning caused me to not scale up as fast. I also just started to fall apart as the game stretched on in an 11 minute game. I kept making more and more mistakes right before I lost a detonated all my banelings on accident, trying to morph more. And the thing is, well, I can already absolutely see that there is definitely some issues there because notice I've pressed Control Shift G, by the way, if you guys don't already have control groups and you're using Game Heart, you need Control Shift G. I'll move myself over here or over here. Here we go. That'll work. I'll move myself over here. Uh, so we can see the control groups of the opponent. Hatcheries, control groups, spawning pools, control group, rally points are set. Cool. But if we look over here, hatcheries only just got put on a control group and they haven't had their rally points set. So I think Realm here is trying to do a build order without figuring out the very basics at all. Now, the build order is nice, but what's more important is the mechanics. So right from the start, things like select the hatchery, build a drone, control one, set the rally points and the overlord across the map, that needs to become muscle memory, right? And it's muscle memory is more important than your build order, right? So trying to develop the mechanical habits and skills is probably the most important thing that you all need to focus on when you're developing this. If we think about it and you can look at the document and look at the order of, of things, uh, actually getting those those kind of mechanics down and getting used to camera. If you want to use camera, I was like, hey, well, you can you don't have to use camera locations. You can use an easier method. He said, no, no, I really want to learn them, but I haven't yet. And I'm like, okay, cool. That, that kind of has to be the highest priority is just going into game with the goal of just setting up those camera locations, adding hatcheries to control groups, setting rally points. Notice neither of these hatcheries have set a non-drone rally point to the front. Um, and, and, you know, getting used to injecting and keeping your macro cycles going and that sort of stuff. So the fact that the camera locations aren't there and that it took a full two minutes or a minute and a half to actually get the hatcheries hotkeyed, I'm a little worried that that's not going to be super duper clean. But... We'll see how it goes from there and we'll take a look at the next step as well. All right, so we're gonna send a drone out to take a third base, which is fantastic. Some Zerglings come in and distract us potentially. And remember, after that third base, guys, we should be building a third queen, Latifa, and then an Overlord. Instead, our queen is chasing these Zerglings. We're building four more drones. We didn't build the queen or the Overlord. So some Zerglings ran in our base. We got distracted and didn't follow the build. And now we're not building Latifa. And now we're going for a lair and a second gas, which you're meant to do when your natural is fully saturated. It is not fully saturated just yet, guys. Notice that's 11. Be better off for that to get a little bit further along. And why is this not good? Because we've just had lava inject pop and we need to spend 400 minerals to build eight drones. But instead we're spending our money on evo chambers and lairs. And for some reason we only built one evo chamber instead of two. Also, where's the Baneling Nest? Remember, it's gas and then Baneling Nest. So the order is completely out of whack here. We're kind of rushing along. I would rather the tech goes down slower rather than trying to be on time, number one. And number two, make sure you do things in order. Don't worry about exactly when you do it in terms of like, is it fast enough? But do it in the right order. So if I'd seen from Realm, second gas and Baneling Nest went down together as one tight little chunk fantastic if i saw lair and two evo chambers start a bit later than that as one tight chunk i'd be really happy but notice that instead we made a lair there's no purpose for it we don't have a banely nest or a second evo we made a gas which we completely forgot to build drones for so we're kind of doing a mishmash of multiple things and why are we doing a mishmash because we haven't set up those base things so don't worry about evos and banely nests. if you haven't even learnt the camera locations simplify things do nothing 
but building up the drones and then making the zergs and banelings and don't worry about the evos and stuff but just just like you know make sure you're getting the camera locations down and realm said well my problem was I, i'd scroll here i'd inject and then i'd scroll up and then i'd inject and then i'd scroll up and then i'd inject and it was taking me so long i felt like oh that, that was taking up all my attention so the thing is well you've got to make those camera locations and develop that from the start if you're planning to do it all you're doing by doing this scrolling is developing bad habits you might think well i'm developing the flow of a build or a feeling of a build but you're way better off if you do it uh with the right mechanic from the start if you're planning to learn that soon anyway so i think that's going to be fantastic if you're at this point where you don't know those buttons a great way to start is to play against an easy ai or even an empty custom game and just practice that in a few games practice your build order in a zero pressure situation but focus on getting the inject cycles down the camera locations doing the right techniques and once you get that down you're going to be feeling a lot better about okay that kind of muscle memory is sinking it's becoming like tying my shoelaces i don't even need to think about it it's like a settled layer of muscle memory now i can focus more on getting my evos bane nest and all that stuff on time whereas while you're just doing the build a bit more sloppily i don't mind if you just go lair build two evos bane nest three hatcheries all at once right but focus more on doing the other stuff first and foremost and you should be good so that's going to be the main thing is just make sure you really focus on those camera those those mechanics earlier rather than later hey pig i'm master i've never used camera locations or hotkeys should i start using it now or not all right if you feel like it retronical there's pro gamers who uh, well not really these days but there are still very high level gms who don't use any of those good mechanics it's pretty awkward to not use them but humans can adapt to any situation it's totally up to you if you want to learn that mechanic so it all comes down to you, how you want to play and you guys need to make that decision early on if you're going to learn the camera locations learn them if you're not don't do it pinpointing realms mistake is important it doesn't focus on how to analyze replays. You can do it the other way around. Check the time of saturation and attack timing and go backwards. Yeah, okay, so, so that's a very good point. All right, guys. So remember, what's the easiest way to actually do all this? Rather than do that, how do you find this yourself? Let's first of all check the benchmark. When did we hit three base saturation? Did we ever hit three base saturation? It looks like we got pretty close at some point here. So we're at 49 drones um but we were a little under you notice that's a bit undersaturated that's a bit undersaturated and remember i was hitting it at about 5 30 that base is also a bit undersaturated and we're building a few drones and like clicking them to one base but not really fixing the saturation on the others so it's kind of hard to gauge because we never really hit three base saturation it feels like we already got to about as far as we're gonna get pretty fast right like realm did hit a pretty decent work account on the third at about yeah so 50 drones at 515 which is like whoa that's not bad that's pretty close but because we didn't have the evos or the baneling nest and everything it's the next timing that's going to show us how off we are so we actually hit 50 drones at 515 really good benchmark when did our one one ling bane attack hit guys ah okay really crisp timing terrible army check this out guys so this is remember i was hitting at like eight minutes in some games like hundreds of lings and banes in this army well first of all we're a bit stretched out the lings are way too far ahead remember guys you're all meant to, always meant to group up at a staging zone otherwise you're fighting a few units at a time which doesn't make any sense always group up before you go in but the other thing is how many units did we actually have there how many units did we actually have 60 zerglings and 16 banelings uh was it 745 yeah 745 all right guys let's go so we can compare that to my benchmarks all right realms benchmark 60 lings what was it 745 sorry i have the memory of a goldfish guys 60 lings 16 banes Okay, so we can compare that to some of the games I had, where just 23, about 23 seconds later, I had double the Baneling count and an extra 40 Zerglings. Well, basically double the Zerglings, because I had 20 just about to pop. So that's, that's a massive army difference, right? That's a big army difference. Even though the timing was hit pretty crisply, we didn't have that much army. 
The other problem, of course, is that our drone count is six lower, which doesn't sound like that much, but six drones does add up a little bit. So it does mean the follow-up's a little weaker as well. But I think if you check those, you just kind of go back and you go, okay, let's fix that up the next time. And because we came in all spread out, that was a big issue. Now, obviously, we see in Gold League, we easily could have clicked half of that Ling Bane into the natural, half into the third, maybe would have killed a lot of drones. But instead, this first army killed almost nothing. We didn't get any drones. The Roaches annihilated us. And this was just a really bad fight for us. So it should be game over from here. But let's keep watching and see how it goes. We're still massing Lings and Banes. We're also making an infestation pit. We don't need an infestation pit ever, guys. Remember, you do nothing but make Ling Bane. Just Ling Bane, just Ling Bane. And if your first attack fails and you feel like the game's going to go a bit longer, remember, what did we do? We added some gases. Two or four gases just so we could make more Banelings because Zerglings obviously fall off a bit and Banelings, you're going to be very gas-starved. Also, if you want to start 2-2 upgrades, that's going to be important. So notice Realm again didn't group up before attacking, but if he clicks the Banelings into the Hydras, they actually, Banelings counter Hydras really well. So the opponent building Hydras is a big mistake here. They should be doing nothing but building Roaches. Roaches are really good versus Ling Bane. Hydras, not so good. But we can see in the supply count, winning this game is going to be a bit of a long shot. Roaches are less supply efficient than Zerglings. And we just accidentally detonated Banelings there while morphing them. Awesome. So I think if we just work on having a better timing, we should be good. This player apparently was 2700 MMR. And you can see that they're out of Realms League. Realms still figuring out the mechanics and the hotkeys. And Deacon, on the other hand, has actually had pretty solid macro here. He's up to 71 drones, 2-1 upgrades, droning a fourth base, rallying to it. Sure, Deacon doesn't use army control groups, but overall, you can tell that Deacon is a way more experienced player who's far outside of Realm's League. So I don't think Realm ever beats Deacon within their first 20 games of StarCraft. And that's totally fine. Deacon's way out of your league. So... Even the advice I'm giving here, it won't make you beat Deacon today or even tomorrow, or probably even next week. But a month from now, absolutely possible. And that's the important thing because you want to focus on improving your systems and you will get so much better as a player. All right, guys, we've got a Zerg versus Zerg. Now, we do have one small adjustment here in Gold League for this matchup, which is we will build a safety, uh, a safety spine crawler, okay? And remember, let's send that drone scout across the map. The safety spine is just in case a Ling Flood comes. A spine crawler is a two armor unit, which will really help out. Make those camera locations. And we can hold that drone key down. This guy can go down there. All right, up to 17 supply. We want to grab a drone, send it to the natural. Third base is set, fourth base is set. I don't think we set the fifth or the camera location yet. So we make those camera locations, check that they all work. You can spam the buttons like that. It makes it look like you're faster than you are at StarCraft, guys. Hot trick for the kids that try to pretend they're really good. Shift one, double tap one, remake camera location, build two more drones, and then we're gonna set that rally point. Hey, isn't that nice? Look at that, guys. So we see a hatchery. The only thing you're scouting for is, is the spawning pool already finished? And in this case, it is. So this is confusing because the spawning pool's already finished and yet there's a hatchery down, which is telling me two very opposite things. Because the hatchery <laughs> should mean it's not a 12 pool. My brain is going to explode from explaining this to, to a gold league level. <sighs> I think as a gold league player, we have to say, you have an expansion, I don't care about anything else. I think that has to be it. I think that has to be what we do here. Okay. I'm trying to like... <laughs> Technically, this is an all-in build, but it's disguised enough that I'm not gonna... I'm gonna pretend it's not. I'm gonna pretend I don't have GM knowledge. And who knows? They might just have a terrible build order. I have no idea, guys. So let's focus on the build and just keep, keep doing the build. If they have an expansion, we don't react to anything. And remember the only difference, I think I wrote down in the notes, um, did I say three minute spine crawler for ZBZ? Let's take a little look here. All right, guys, we build two queens and four zerglings as per standard. Uh, the spine will go down after the third hatchery, the third queen and the overlord builds. That's the rule that I've written down for myself, guys. Now, we do see a lot of lings coming across the map. Nigel's like, hey, whoa, what's going on? But a few lings on its own is not the end of the world, guys. We're going to try and just apply the build order. And if we lose, we lose. And that's totally fine. ZBZ is the matchup where 
the styles I'm teaching you guys are not very effective um, if your opponents are doing very tight, aggressive builds. But because of simply trying to keep things simple for ourselves... Oh, no! Okay, let's cancel that, guys. Inject, inject, build a spine crawler. Let's build another spine crawler. And this is where... What else are we going to do, guys? We're going to move our queens onto our ramp. We're going to build some more lings. Now, this is not blocked. So what you want to do, right-click and then hold position. Right-click and then hold position. And you're going to notice those queens are solid on that ramp. And all I'm doing is building more lings. More lings. The drones can fight as well. We A-move our zerglings here. And that queen block on the ramp is a game changer. Keep building lings. A-move into the main base. Put those drones back on mining. And we're going to uproot one spine, not both, and try to move it to the front. Let's build some queens as well. Probably should have started those earlier. Build another overlord. And we can also do an inject here. And then we can shift click back to the ramp. Now, I don't have ling speed, so let's make ling speed. Um, our lings can pull back because we want to fight with all of our units if possible. And we want to A move. They're trying to run past with ling speed, so it's a little bit scary letting them in. But I have so many lings that it's okay. As long as we hang on the ramp, we should be fine. And we're going to keep building overlords and drones. Because at this point, I'm not worried about anything coming my way at all. Nothing coming my way. Why? Because we already defended it, right? We already looked pretty good. Let's, uh... The lings can go there. That can spread creep. We don't have any queens to inject right now. We desperately need to get them out. So let's build a third base, guys. And then we're just going to continue doing our build. Those spines should keep us completely safe. We'll move that one to the front. Um, we just need one more drone in the main. Ooh, all right, guys. Lizzie injects, Cersei injects, and Latifah's already alive. So we might as well spread some creep, try and connect that to the third. Latifah's going to go over there. Shift one, double tap, remake camera location, set the rally point. All right, guys. So what are we doing here? Do we want to counterattack with those links? You could if you want. Be like, oh, counterattack. Because they don't have link speed, it feels very weak. Instead, just follow the build. Build Overlord. Build Overlord. We're just kind of putting that vision out there. Lizzie inject. Cersei inject. Build drones. And guess what, guys? Those drones will get us saturated. So let's go second gas failing nets. Notice how after all the chaos, what do most players do? They stop doing the macro cycle. They start doing things randomly. Ah, oh, build this! Ah, oh, build this! And they mess everything up. But what do I do, guys? Are we just building drones? Click on the gas. Reselect the hatch, build some drones, click on the minerals. And notice we waited for two base, we then went gas bailing us. What's next? Laren Evos, all this sort of stuff. Rallying to our third base, we're following the build. So we, we did a diversion, a branch of our tree, we blocked their attack, and then we went straight back to the main trunk of the build. And that's what you do in any chaotic situation. Inject, 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 build drones, build overlords. Chat says no scout. We have an overlord outside their base. If we want, we can move another overlord forward. And then have like one watching to see if there's a third base uh, but there's nothing we would ever react to anyway so there's no reason to <laughs> double evo chamber lair oh we should also go double macro hatch because we have so much money so we could have done in one selection of drones the evos and the hatcheries would have been even better there control click the hatcheries and go shift one twitch is going oh, muters what's coming is it muters is it this St don't worry about it do your build inject 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 Build about eight, eight more drones there. Click them on there. Confirm. Yeah, that's that's going to be three fate bases full. We need a few more drones in the main. Click them there. A few more overlords. And from now, it's nothing but Ling Bane production, guys. Awesome. What else do we need, though? What else do you need? You guys know what else we need. A fourth base and a fifth base. So it doesn't matter what our opponent's doing. If our opponent was playing muters, that would actually be really bad because Mass Ling is really good versus muters because you're so fast, you can run past them. Shift one on the fourth, double tap, center camera location. Shift one on the fifth, double tap, center camera location. Let's rally to that fourth. Lizzie, Saucy, Latifa. Keep those injects going. Build more Zerglings. Then we go one one upgrades and Bane Ling speed. Let's look at the other side of the map. What's going on, guys? Looks like it's Lings and Banes versus Lings and Banes. All right. Check it out, guys. What we're going to do, uproot our spines, put one at each base. And what else can we do? Maybe build a few overlords while we're just waiting here. Not time to inject. Maybe make some banelings. Oh, I know. Control click the lings, guys. What are we going to do? 
steal them onto number seven. And which side do we want to counterattack? Up to you. I'm going to send them to the bottom corner down here. Okay, these things are going to hide down here. Time for an inject. Inject, inject, inject. And remember, everything else just goes with our main army with these banelings. They're just going to be building up. Those guys are the backstab squad. So if my opponent attacks me, I'll send these guys in to attack his main base. Just A, move them to the main. Or, once my army's ready to attack with 1-1 one, one and banelings, nest, we'll attack the top side. And those guys will attack the bottom side. Really easy, guys. What are the spines for? We don't need more spines. Nope. No, no reason for spines, guys. Yeah. Inject Cersei, uh, Lizzie, inject Cersei, inject Latifa. More Zerglings! There's no such thing as too many Zerglings. Uh, another 40 seconds, guys. So we're going to get one more production cycle before going for an attack. Let's make these Banelings ahead of time so they're already morphed, so it doesn't slow the attack down. And look at this, guys. At about nine minutes, your main starts mining out. A lot of people here would pull four off the base. Don't. The other two mineral patches are about to mine out as well. So always just drop the base down to about eight workers. So if you can box about eight of them, just send those to your fourth. Perfect. You want to do that every game about nine minutes. Inject, inject, inject. Let's build Zerglings! Alright, guys. Guess what? We keep checking these Evos. Ten seconds till that's done. Let's go. So we're going to move up here. Remember, don't just click it in like we saw Realm do. Because look how much the Banelings are much slower. They spread out. So click to the staging point here. And then we'll inch them forward. Alright, let's do it. Okay, let's attack. So I've selected this key, guys. We're A-moving the main. And then these guys are going to... Oh! Okay, let's go, guys. Do we A-move his army? We do. This is a terrible idea. Banelings should not attack into enemy Banelings. But we're going to do it for the lols. Because that's what we do in most situations. I'll explain why that's bad in, in the next one. And now we A-move in the third. Now, because I killed all of his Banelings, I'm going to not micro that side. Instead, I'm going to micro this side. So, they're taking a good fight. Nothing to micro, guys. Always err. A lot of people jump to the army and they start doing this. Ah! Ah, I got a micro! No, no, no. Micro just means monitoring your units. And if there's a, give order, uh, a good order to give, give it. If not... Don't do anything. So something we could do is grab a few lings, click them in the main. Try and kill the drones. Oh, they got blocked on the ramp. No worries. Here, what can I do? Move fast to make sure the banelings clear him. And then go in up there. Yeah. Ling Bane versus Ling Bane is possibly the funniest shit ever. I imagine some of these volunteers I'm getting are literally applying my bronze to GM that I'm doing right now and from last week. But it's creating some of the dumbest games I've ever seen. These interactions are not things you're going to see much on the ladder. Many more players will probably be playing Lurches. A lot of people play Banelings early game, but massing Ling Bane and Zerg Zerg is super weird. So <laughs> the fact that we're getting so many games like this is really friggin' hilarious. <gasps> Alright guys, let's talk about two things. First of all, at the end, why was it a bad idea to attack towards his Banelings? Because Banelings wreck other Lings and Banes. So your best bet is basically create a problem and force them to deal with it. What do you mean, Pig? What do you mean? And was he going double Evos as well? Yeah, it looks like he was. I was just... Uh, it looks like I was just way ahead of the curve, way ahead of the supply after defending the early stuff. So here we go. Let's let's watch this fight, guys. So all I needed to do was click my Ling Bane into this base, and he would have had to come and try and chase me. And all I really need to deal with that whole army is a few Banelings. So what would have been the peak micro here is if I click this whole army just somewhere near this third base so that they'll automatically attack stuff. And then what I would have done is I would have boxed a few of these Banelings and ideally just a, just three or four. But if I end up boxing a third in my army, that's fine. As long as it's not the whole army. And I'd just click that towards the enemy Ling Bane. Because what would happen then is my Banes would try to get into his Ling Bane and then I'd A-move them once they're up in the guts. Instead, unfortunately, he, he looked like he was doing that. Artie was doing a good job, but then they pulled back. Bit of a mistake, and notice they didn't have a move command. If they had a move command there, their banelings would have moved deeper into the middle of my guys and got big juicy hits. And by attack moving my whole army at him, I'm presenting the option to get that, which is disgusting. Way better to click in the mineral line, get the Ling Bane in amongst their economy and all that sort of stuff, and then just split a few banelings off towards their big packs of Ling Bane, and that'll be really fantastic. Okay, let's go back and look at the early defense. So, <laughs> the build order I want to break down for you guys, because this one is unscoutable until you're much higher level. My opponent actually went for just building two drones, and then they went 
So they went gas, 13 gas, or 14 gas, 13 spawning pool here, which is basically a really fast rush. It's not quite a 12 pool, but this is very close to the fastest po possible uh, proxy, right? And remember, we have a list for that. 12 pool, proxy barracks, proxy gates. So this is almost that aggressive. And this is basically, look, if their ba buildings aren't in their base, if are they building, yeah. If, if the buildings aren't in the, are not in their base, or their spawning pool is already finished, stop building drones at 19, pull off gas, make queens, make lings, drop two spines, immediately react. And if we did that, we would have been doing that much earlier. But I'm going to explain why I didn't do that reaction. And that's because, guys, when I sent my drone in, I saw a hatchery which massively slows down the rush from my opponent. And that's meant to trick me into thinking it's an expansion play, when it's actually not. You can see my opponent's only at 11 drones, whereas a normal hatchery first is at 16 drones. The whole point is most people don't drone scout, so they would never see this coming. But even with the drone scout, I'm pretending I don't notice what's happening. But like I said, guys, what's the rule? How do you know it's a 12 pool? If you recognize the spawning pool is already finished, and this is, this is assuming, this is a 13 drone we've sent in. If at a minute 10, which is usually when it enters their base, their spawning pool's already finished or about to finish, then definitely it is one of these early rushes and you can react a lot harder. However, I did not just to show that if you only notice the hatchery, you don't pay attention to the pool timing, you can still defend. Because a lot of people are going to get confused by that and go, is it a rush or not? And the whole point is, this is kind of somewhere in between the fastest rush possible because it's kind of pretending to be an expand build. So, <clears throat> I basically, st I didn't react at all, right? I was like, yeah, I'll just do my standard build because I saw an expansion and we still ended up defending just fine. And this shows how you can screw things up. Another way you can look at it, by the way, is if their pool's finished and yours is just starting, it gives you an idea of how much quicker it is. Yeah. So anyway, I went for the third hatchery and remember the rule with standard ZVZ now, we've added in Gold League, is go third hatch, build a queen, build an overlord, and then drop a spine crawler for safety anyway. But we cancel the third, so we go, okay, well, if we lose our third base, we can see, looking at our overlord, what could we see, guys? Constant stream of lings coming. We go, okay, this, this player is all in. They're, they're going crazy aggressive, so I drop two spines, and then I put my queens on my ramp. Now, even better than doing the lava injects is if you save energy on your queens and don't lava inject, then you can get a transfuse off at about 3 minutes 30. So notice I moved my queens on my ramp. Now, an actual better way of doing it is you can right click the queen and then go shift H for hold position or whatever your hold position key is. That's this one. And that means they'll move to that right click command and then hold position, which is really nice because you can queue it up ahead of time. Instead, we kind of adjust, we just click them there and then I adjusted them. Now notice a lot of players here, remember they, they click here, they go move, 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 move here. But what did I do? I just told the queen to click down here and then pressed hold position when she was in the right position. And same up here. That queen, I right clicked her there and then pressed hold position when she was in the right position. Technically though, I messed up the wall off. You're gonna notice this one's booty is sticking out. So <laughs> this here, Lizzie came down and has a nice spot where she's just slightly further back. If Lizzie shuffled slightly to the left, it would give room for Cersei to be perfectly in line with her and Cersei's booty wouldn't be sticking out. But Cersei, she's been doing those squats, she's been working those glutes, and so there's actually a lot of surface area on her, where you can see quite a lot of the lings can attack her at once. Actually, funnily enough, the ling on the right side couldn't actually attack her, but I still think there's one more ling that's attacking her than otherwise. But you can see, guys, I just hit 26 energy. So if I didn't do the lava inject, I could have transfused Cersei, and if I didn't even lose Cersei, I take like zero damage here. Cersei injects Lizzie, Two sisters looking out for each other. You get, you're never going to lose a ZVZ. Again, if you get those queens on the ramp against any big Ling Bane Flood, Ling Flood, get those queens on the ramp. It is so, so awesome. Now, if it does hit really early, you might need to build the spines up in the main. If it was just a straight 12 pool with no expansion, we'd probably build the spine crawlers in the main base. But this works really well. All right, guys, we're going into a match versus a Terran player here. Let's get Nigel, send him across the map. Control one our hatchery, double tap, make the camera location set the rally point and let's build 
Nigel's little brother to go down over the natural. Shift click out front. Double tap one to jump back to the main or press camera location one. Either way works. Build a drone. Let's go to the natural. Make camera location two. Third base. Camera location three. And the defaults for these, control F2, control F3, control F4. Select the hatchery. Build those drones, guys. Let's build another drone. And we forgot to send the drone across the map, so we'll just send him now. Three, four. Fifth base there. And a rally point. Now try to be consistent with that drone scout timing. Because if you're scouting at very different timings all the time, you might get thrown off because you see something you're like, oh, it's a really early barracks or something. And it's not. It's just you sent your drone later than normal. So try to be consistent with your drone scouting timing or you might throw yourself off through your own inconsistency. This is... It sounds silly, but it's actually really common that people make this mistake, guys. Third, fourth, fifth, and camera location. Just checking all of those work. And the buildings are at home, so we don't need to worry about anything. Let's go for the gas in the spawning pool, guys. Let's build that one. And let's rally some drones into the gas. We can also pull a drone off minerals onto the gas, potentially. But actually, we don't need to, because remember, this guy is already rallied onto those minerals. That's why that it says 16, even though we've actually only got 15 drones there. Eight drones plus seven, 15. Let's build another overlord here. We'll put it down here. Always nice to have it watching kind of the reaper ledge angle against Terran. And uh, awesome. Now on this map, guys, you've got these rocks. So the next drone, the 20th drone, always rallies down here to mine from the natural. But instead, I'm going to click it on those gold minerals just to open those minerals up a little bit earlier. Not a big deal. Just a small detail I feel like doing. Now Nigel's going to come in here, have a little bit of a scout, and then we'll just sit him over there on the pervert area. Let's build two queens and four zerglings. I actually haven't necessarily been sacrificing my overlords, have I, guys? So you know what? We'll, we'll leave Nigel out front the base, and we might sacrifice him in this game at uh, four minutes is normally when we do that. Let's build some more drones. Ling speed starts up. All right, guys. Oi, mine that one. Give us an opening, man. And we want to send a drone to that third base, don't we, guys? So let's go down to the third. This guy can finish mining those gold minerals. Build another one. Oh, we forgot to set the rally point down here, guys. Let's move those drones down there. All right, let's go, Lizzie. Let's go, Cersei. Remember, Lizzie inject, Cersei inject. Third hatchery. Double tap. Shift one. Make the camera location. Jump back to the rally point. Latifa starts up on the hatchery. And then we build an overlord and chuck that out front, our third. Fantastic. And we go back to droning. All right, guys. We're looking really, really good so far. This is fantastic. Now... The other big piece of scouting we didn't really talk about in the last show is at 3 minutes 30, you want to check if your opponent has expanded or not. And that's the other sort of play that we're really adding in in Gold League is checking for that. Inject, inject, build drones, build overlords. We need overlords on the edges still. So we'll build one and click it there. Build overlord and click it up to the right. Awesome. All right, guys. So we don't see that, which means, oh God, our opponent's doing a one base play. So number one, send the overlord through to try and see what they're doing. Number two, I have a list here in my build document. Let's, let's go take a look, guys. What do we say? Swap to army production and build a Baneling Nest. Okay, let's make a Baneling Nest here. Inject, inject. Tifa goes over to the third base. And we're going to build a lot of Zerglings. And what did we see down there, guys? I have no idea what we saw. Looks like maybe some Marines killed it. So we have no idea what's happening. What else do we do? We build a Spore in each base in case it's air units. And you want to keep scouting to try to figure out what's happening while continuing to build army units. So let's send some lings out. One to his base. Now, what if your opponent's proxy duo taking a corner base? One. So we're shift clicking a ling on the side. But, oh, what's this? Something's coming through the middle, guys. Let's send a zergling there and then pull way back. What have we got? Oh, big army. Okay. All right, guys. Pull back. Inject. 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 Try to build more Zerglings and more Overlords. And there's a big army here. What do we do when there's a big army that we're not ready to fight, guys? We run away. Boxy units, run away. Hide, hide, hide. I've got... Notice all my eggs are rallied to the back. And looks like we're going to lose that base, which is not great. But we want to wait. And then as all these Lings are out, now we'll go all at once onto this army and try to take this army out. And that didn't go too well. Really nice attack for Senju. Let's keep injecting. Really good push for Senju. Now the queen there, she's in trouble. Pull her back. 
We can pull the drones and fight potentially. So we're gonna try and fight with drones. These drones here can also try and fight. So we're gonna A move and see if we can clear these tanks. And we're just gonna keep building Zerglings, select hatcheries, A move. Got. Looks like we are gonna hold. And then we're gonna A move across the map here. All right, guys, let's send our drones back to mine and control click. Calm. And then build this hatchery. Don't look at the fighting. I'm convinced we could see units rallying in that that was his entire rally. And we just counterattacked with a big army of Zerglings, right? So we should be good. Now, we don't have enough money for a hatchery, so it is what it is. Let's respread creep. Inject, inject. And let's just rally to this base and build drones. Okay, now I can take a moment to look at my Zerglings. And it looks like my opponent's still on one base. And is just building up for another attack. And that looks like... Ooh, Hellions and Marines. So what would be good, guys? Banelings. We probably could have morphed some Banelings on the last one, right? So we're going to morph a few Banelings. I'll spread some creep down there as well, just to connect these bases. I'd love to build a third base. But we just don't have the money. But I do need to keep building Zerglings, guys. The problem is, I'm only at 20 drones. So normally you're at least ahead on economy versus someone doing a one base all in. I'm not. So what we're going to do is we're going to just send another Zergling to see if there's an attack coming. Shift D select. Bring this home. Oh, he is coming. Okay, guys. Lizzie inject. Cersei inject. Do nothing but build lings. Let him come in. And let's try and A move those units. Now, if I move past, that would actually be better here. But for now, we're just going to chase them. Now, just chasing aliens is not usually advisable like this if your opponent has god tier micro. Luckily, guys, we're below Diamond League. And below Diamond League, no one knows how to micro aliens. Nobody. If you guys find me a below Diamond player that knows how to micro aliens, I'll show you a goddamn unicorn. Um, let's try and kill these guys. It looks like he's on move command, so he's panicking now. Is Senju. Fantastic. Whew. Okay, guys, we've been watching the micro for a bit. A move across the map. Inject. Inject. And guess what? We're going to build drones. We've also got money, so let's quickly take this expansion. Ooh, we got 300 minerals. Awesome. So we're going to try and recover that economy, guys. Shift one. Remember, the camera location's already set up, so we don't need to do that. And our main's mostly saturated. Our third's mostly saturated. Wait, there's guys missing there. Build two drones. Click on the gas. Select the hatcheries. Rally to the minerals. Oof, stressful game, guys. Okay, so let's poke around. Is there an expansion? Nope. Let's grab one ling and send it up the ramp. We don't want to run up there with everything. Ooh, okay, big army. So what we're going to do, deselect a zergling and run home. Inject. And look, we've got extra injects available. So what we can do is we can queue. Queue some injects. Build zerglings. And we're supply blocks. Let's build a few more overlords here. And as more lava pops, we'll build some more. And the question is, do you drone or build army here, guys? Well, if you're ever unsure, don't ever stop producing. Always keep producing one or the other. But if you're in a stressful situation, how do you balance it? Half and half. Do one round of drones, one round of army. One round of drones, one round of army. In this scenario, though, my opponent's on one base, which means that most they have effectively 22 workers mining. I am on 33 drones, which is plus 50% economy on top of that. Plus 50% economy. That's more than enough of a lead. I'm just going to focus on army units. So let's build lings. We're going to inject here. Get Cersei down there. Latifa there. And you know what? We see an army coming, which just confirms. Let's send our army. Deselect a ling. Let's try to watch that. What's this? What's this? Oh, a liberator, guys. All right, let's move that. Spore crawler over. Nice moves. Got a few drones to replace the ones that died. Spore crawler should deal with that. You could technically move the queen around as well. That's okay. Inject, inject, inject. Build more zerglings. And where's that army? I think we're ready to fight, guys. We have a lot of Ling Bane. And if your opponent's moving forward with tanks, which we've seen a few times this game, that can be an issue. But that's a Liberator. Okay, so we need a Spore Crawler on each base. We want one there. We've already got one there. And we can just try to micro our Queens towards it, potentially. Okay, that's annoying. But what do we do, guys? Like this? No, 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 no. We just move here. Shift click. That should be in range without getting shot. Woohoo! Whoo, that was stressful. Build overlords. Inject, inject, inject. Build lots of overlords. And while we're waiting for those overlords to come out, guys, let's go double Evo. Oh my god! Where? Double macro hatchery. The power of not getting distracted here is pretty big, guys. And then we'll move the spore over. 
and we'll just replace those drones. Build three drones, right click. Build a bunch more drones, right click. Now what's happening over here, guys? These guys are getting attacked. That's not good. So Senju's being very annoying. Oh, run away. Wow. Okay, guys, I gotta do it. I'm sorry. That's too that's just too 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 irresistible to resist! I <laughs> I didn't even attack it. He put it in red life. He put it in red life, guys. He did that. He set that up for himself. I I, 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 I just took advantage of what he set up. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I don't know why he, he put the rocks on red life and then moved his army through the canyon. This is a special feature on this map where if you break any of these cooling towers, it brings down these rocks everywhere, guys, and crushes any units stuck inside. No, you just... <laughs> keep injecting. Inject, inject, inject. Let's build a new queen. And keep building zerglings. Let's pull back. Morph more banelings here. This is really hard to deal with, guys. But we've got the tech up. Two evo upgrades. Bane speed. We never got the second gas. So let's take that second gas now. Put these three workers on the gas. Oh, looks like one of the macro hatcheries never built, guys. So let's build that other macro hatchery now. And then we can control click them and shift one. We can also go 4th and 5th base. That's really important because this game is a messy game. And that means your main's mining out. Your natural will be mining out as well. Well, I guess it won't in this case. And actually, we never droned that natural, guys. So as I look at that natural, I realize we need to build 16 workers ASAP, guys. 16 workers ASAP. All right, so inject, inject, inject. Keep building those drones. And just rally them all there. Let's add this to the hotkey. Add this to the hotkey. What is that? Is it, what is that? Is that a box with a snake in it? Reptile crate? <laughs> How have I not noticed that before? <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, when the upgrades finish, we, we'd like to go for an attack. But are we up to... Yeah, we're up to a pretty good work account now. So let's swap into Zergling production. Inject, inject, inject. Build Zerglings. Build a few more Overlords. And uh, let's send some more scouts out on the map, shall we? So we're going to put a ling on the watchtower. Deselect. Click a ling in the middle. Click a ling in the middle. Deselect. Bring back. And you know what, guys? Let's stick to our system. Control click the lings. Alt 7. Put them in the bottom left corner. And the rest of our army will group up here. Inject Lizzie. Inject Cersei. Inject Latifa. Build more lings. What is this? I don't know what just happened out there, guys. Let's... Let's explore with the Overlord, maybe. Let's also spread some creep, just because my opponent seems to be putting Liberators randomly everywhere. In this case, it's a Banshee. Okay. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to make an Overseer. And what you can do is you can right-click that on the Banshee to make sure you follow it. Latifah is the third base queen, guys. This one here is Freddy. Freddy does not have a Mercury backing him up right now, but we'll get to that in Platinum League. Inject, inject, inject. <clears throat> Building more Lings. Are our upgrades done? Guys, 1-1 one, one and Bane Speed's done, so I'd like to go do a big attack. Has my opponent opened the minerals? Let's take a look. Those minerals aren't open. We're just attacking the front with everything. Okay. Looks like we're attacking the army with everything, so I'm adding that. Shift 2. Army's going back together on this left side. More Banes. We're going to go for this attack. Let's do another round of Injects. Inject, Inject, Inject. Build Zerglings. Build a few more Overlords. And when these banelings are done, let's go for it. You know what's a pro move? Send a ling in first. So we sent a zergling in there, guys. Did we? Yep, it was one of the lings in the back, so it takes a while. Group up, group up, group up. Get them all together, lads. And move past and then aim. All right. <clears throat> move past aiming. And then we can box some units and click them to the high ground as well. Oh, let's click on the deeper, remember? And we can A move towards the main. What's that, guys? <clears throat> if we've A moved towards the main, we've done most of the micro we can do. But you could still grab a few lings and banes, click them in the mineral line, and go, that's a lot of BCs. So what are we going to do? We're going to build a spire. And we're going to build about five spore crawlers around the spire. And a lot of spores around all of our bases, okay? We're also going to hold the drone key down. Why the drone key? The reason we hold the drone key down <clears throat> is because BCs are very expensive. And that's a lot of BCs. Where are they teleporting? Teleporting right on top of our spores. 
So, this is a big problem. We're going to have to build a new spire over there. Get some more spores around it. And take gases. There. Take gases here. The spores actually scared him away from my spire. I thought my BC the BCs would win that fight. I was wrong. Either way, that's fine. Just focus on your economy. My opponent has zero economy. If Senju doesn't kill all my economy, eventually I'll get corruptors and win. So put guys on gas. Let's rally here. Build three drones. Click on gas. Build three drones. Click on gas. Go to the fourth base. Hold the drone key down for that one. I'm, I'm going to try. I'm not going to bother with spores here because there's four BCs anyway. They can always overwhelm it. We'll build two more gases there as well. All right, let's go look at what's happening. Okay, so that's not good. <clears throat> but the queen outranges the BCs, so she can move there and get a few hits off. And if the BCs come forward, you try to run her away, okay? And these guys can go up to the right. Click on the gas. Deselect. Right click on the gas. Deselect. Right click on the minerals. Now, my spires should be done, so I'm going to stop making um, drones. And we're just going to hover over the economy. We have 38 workers, and we have one, two, three, four, five gases mining. So we should be able to make a lot of corruptors here, guys. We don't have a lot of money just yet. Now, rather than selecting our hatcheries and building them and having them pop out and die, we're manually going to build corruptors. And we're going to go control three. Manually. Corruptors. Shift three. Here, it looks pretty safe. Shift three. That's going to be nine corruptors, which will be pretty good versus the BCs. I think now that those guys are coming out, I can probably just build them from anywhere. And that base is down, so let's take these drones. We're going to put them all in the top right. So we've only got two bases mining right now, which is not good. And this is where you A-move your corruptors and lose them all two at a time. Just kidding, guys. Pull back. If he's going to fight the spore crawlers, I'll go in and fight with the spores. Otherwise, I won't. Now, rather than a move, if you can right-click on the weak battle cruiser, that's really good. And now we want to go across the map with these corruptors. And the BCs normally would make you freak out. And they will... You guys would lose in that situation. Senju should have won that game. That was sick play. He showed every single example of abusive one-base play. Really good pushes. Followed up with a two-base, two-port BC. That would have killed most of you guys because you wouldn't have been as calm. I'm not playing much faster than you guys can by any means, but it's the organization and knowing what to do next. But Pig, I don't have that organization. I don't know what to do next. And that's why it's all about muscle memory. Remember, we already covered this in episode number one, how to defend BCs. This was a very special scenario though. And I'll let you guys know what made me understand the difference in scenarios. So let's scroll up guys. Uh, response to BC or heavy air. Get a spore in each base and a few connecting spores. So about five spores total. Uh, if you're blindsided though, you may need to build like five spores near the BC itself and then move the spores under it. In this case, what did we do? What did we do? The spire. We knew that that spire was a weak point. We knew this was not just, oh, he's making BCs. We knew this was I am blindsided by mass BC. Now, how did I know this? So I want you guys to just watch my camera. Watch my camera. And this is what you want to do is you want to look at trigger points where you see something and you immediately know. Now, at this point, I went, oh, he's going for a BC. And I could have gone and started a spire and stuff. But I didn't. I said, let's keep focusing on the fight. Let's make sure I get maximum damage and don't just have my units idle in the low ground. Let's make sure I get in the main and really finish him off as best I can, right? It's at this point, I knew something serious was happening. Do you guys do you guys recognize on this screen what I saw that made me a little bit suspicious about what was happening? Okay, we're going back to school right now, guys. One, two, three. Oh my god, he's playing two port or more BC. This guy is quitting everything into battle cruisers. It's essentially, even if I hadn't done this damage, it is crazy committed battle cruisers that need to do damage. I, however, have done economic damage to him which means it's completely all in there's going to be three to six battle cruisers that's going to be the last money my opponent has in fact it was three star forts one two three building battle cruisers so this is a huge commitment and i knew at this point okay i've got my lings and banes in the production killing the last workers we need to go back and build defense 
Now, this is a very specific example, guys, against Mass BC. So I'm going to write some notes for this under the Gold League section. How to deal with Mass BC. So what do we need to do, guys? <clears throat> Spire ASAP into Mass Corruptor. Thanks for the Bezos so, box. focus on upgrades. Now, it's up to you whether you get armor is, is often considered better versus battle cruisers because they shoot faster, but attack helps you kill them faster. So it's totally up to you. So you need lots of upgrades as well. The most important thing um, is basically protect the Spire. If surprised, surround it with spore crawlers. That's, that's big. Also, we're only on two gas usually. So we want to go up to six or eight gases and add drones for this. So rather than sitting at 54 drones, you'd be going way higher on the workers to make sure you can handle it. And that's really, really key. So the earlier you scout it, the better. If I'd sent an overseer scout in in this game and saw this two minutes earlier, I wouldn't have needed to do all this crazy spore crawler nonsense that we did, right? So watch my response here, guys, and you want this to be like muscle memory. So first step, first heavy BC spire. Next, I built a lot of spores all around it. Notice I built like five spore crawlers covering my main mineral line and the spire. And then I built like up to three or four spores, about five spores on each base. Cause I knew if three BCs teleport in, you need a lot of spores to deal with. Corruptors also hard counter carriers because they do bonus damage to massive. They're good versus Colossus as well. Cause those can be hit by anti-air attacks. So you can see if I was even a few seconds later on those spores, I would have lost that situation. But I was already preparing, assuming I was gonna lose that main base position by adding more spores and gases. But wait, wait, wait. I forgot to mention the most important stop, guys. I already built a massive round of drones because every spore you build kills a drone. Every gas kills a drone. A lot of players forget this. And this is something that you'll find in all of your anti-air responses always. Add a lot more drones. Every spore and extractor kills a drone. So anytime you guys are responding to air as Zerg, even if you think you're already at the work account you want to be, make sure you build a big extra round of drones to make sure you're accommodating for all the drones that you're killing by turning into buildings. But yeah, basically we managed to get that out and then I was building drones, making sure I secured gas income because if I didn't get these gases up, I lose almost all my gas income in the main and I didn't have enough to begin with. So we're trying to saturate these other gases just really calmly and methodically pulled some drones away from that base and we migrated to the top right because if the bcs dive the spores and my opponent loses them he's dead and then we swap to just building corruptors and i know if i can just get enough corruptors to build this we'll be good whereas if i built them here and they pop one or two at a time we'd be in trouble we manually started building them adding them to our control group remember and then we try to group them up behind the spore crawlers and only go in when we have at least three corruptors per battle cruiser. Preferably four. Because especially if you go in with like seven or eight corruptors here, they could Yamato, if they weren't using it on buildings, which he is, they could Yamato five corruptors out of the sky instantly and then you've got three corruptors getting owned. So you want to have at least three more. And then we see because he had butted, I wasn't ready to fight, but because he fought into the spore crawlers there, I decided to fight. Otherwise, I would have waited a bit longer before going in. And what I was going to do next was I was going to A move across the map to try to hunt those BCs down. And then I was going to swap into Zergling production and attack the ground as well. So the Corruptors could kill the air, Zerglings could kill anything on the ground since Corruptors can't shoot down, and that was going to be game. Let's leave that replay straight away and not show the rocks going down just to trigger Twitch chat. Just kidding, guys. So for some reason, um,. Senju got a bit fancy and decided to try to set up a trap here and was hoping that I would move through the middle and they would collapse the rocks and crush my army um, and then stepped into it themselves. Now, this Liberas was huge as well, by the way. How do we deal with Liberators, guys? Really important. I've actually written about this, I think, in the replay analysis section. Uh, I wrote about it for dealing with a Reaper. I don't know if I, I talked about it with a Liberator. Have I talked about Liberator at all? Liberator is one of the most annoying units in the game. It's awesome. Okay, guys, uh, response to how to deal with mass BC. All right, how to deal with Liberator for us. So what's the, let's let's write that list down because that was actually really key as well, guys. You need to build your muscle memory on these situations. Spore in each base. So what, what do you do? First of all, pull drones away. 
Spore, Crawler, move Queen to avoid Lib Zone, but start attacking. Build Spores in other bases. Put Drones back to Mining. That's a pretty intense list. So you'll notice I didn't actually do that part. I simplified this to try and show you guys a more basic list where I only focused on the Spores and the Queens and I let my Drones die really, really hard. But you can add those extra steps as you get better at the game. The important thing though is make it like muscle memory. You see that coming in and you uh, and you respond automatically. All right, guys. So Sinju thought I'll set up a trap and bait the Zerg into it. But I ran away and he didn't react quickly enough. So he just chases me and I actually break the rocks. <laughs> Watch them get crushed. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, boy. <laughs> oh, man. Got a bit too tricky for his own good, did send you there. Bit too tricky for his own good. So this game actually got really intense at the start. I took a lot of damage, guys. Let's go back and just point out how good his timing was as well. There were so many reactions in this game. Where, remember verse 1 base? I just massed army. But he actually had a really just nice push of marines. And I actually didn't get enough zerglings up in time. So what is the what is the tool? At 3 minutes 30, if they don't have an expand, you stop w building workers. Notice I'm already at 34 workers, so it's a ton of economy. And you start just pumping out zerglings. Now you could also build some spines or queens. Would really help here as well, right? But generally, baneling nest plus zerglings... And build a spore in each base because you don't know if it's like one base battle cruiser or banshee or something you really don't know what's happening and i didn't actually spot the army and what composition it was otherwise i might have been a little bit more focused on that but uh yeah i actually thought i was going to win this first fight and it turned out there were so many tanks they actually did pretty good so really well done by my opponent i thought you know like 50 zerglings would beat this army apparently three siege tanks is pretty good I think also my units were a little bit awkward because they kind of got stuck behind each other going through these choke points. And a lot of my units that were rallying in were already dying. So you can see that he did a really good job of fighting here. And I did kill one siege tank. Do we get another friendly fire there? Yeah, we got a few friendly fires on the tanks. So you can see if the lings got on top of the tanks a bit more and we killed those, it would probably be a little bit better. But... If he goes even deeper on creep, you know, we are going to be able to defend. And we did try to run back and then A move all of our workers on it. And this was probably not the best play. I could have run away and waited for Zerglings to pop out here. But hey, this is not all about making perfect plays, is it? There's a lot of mistakes in there. We pulled the drones that were hiding as well. And at the end of the day, this looks really bad, guys. I'm on 14 workers versus 23. Surely I'm dead. But no, one base. There's no follow-up. That's why this push was so scary. And I've got two bases, I've got queens, and not only that, I've got a big army advantage because I've got 14 zerglings out with eight more building, and my opponent's rally is strung out on the map. So I just immediately A move because I've been seeing units rallying in one at a time, which tells me there's no big clump of units anywhere. So I can A move across the map, focus on nothing but rebuilding my economy, which is of course what I'm going to do in this next little step. I just do drones, inject, drones, inject. And then I see the next army coming, and after just rebuilding six drones, I go back to Zerglings because I see an army coming. And I go, whoa, make Zerglings, make Badelings, watch out, here's an army. And I see him coming, and I pull back, and we wait for him to come on in. And of course, we get some really good fights. And he tries to kind of backstab me there, but of course, that doesn't work. And once I clean up the army, what do we do, guys? We... A move because we see he's rallying across the map again so we know he doesn't have a clump of units so we're going to A move not all the way but about three quarters of the way across the map to there and then we go back to injecting and building drones trying to rebuild that third base trying to get our footing back under us and back towards a normal game plan doesn't end up exactly the same as a normal game but we end up getting back in that direction and that's the trick guys after chaos what is the instinct for most players he attacked me I'll go attack him uh, adrenaline pumping, oh, 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 tunnel visioning, running your army back and forwards down their ramp, going, what's happening, what's happening, what's happening? What did I do? In every chaotic situation, I cleaned it up and I went back to the macro cycle. 
I'd micro my units, I'd go home and do a macro cycle. There, I was I was leaving, I leave a Zergling scout outside the base, I go home, I inject, build, rebuild Cersei, start building Zerglings, we just kind of go through that habit and that rhythm and we just follow that order. We stop worrying about what might happen next, we just focus on rebuilding the economy, build some army, build some economy, build some army, build some economy. I figured because my opponent didn't have an expansion, I stopped at 33 drones and did nothing but army for a while as well. And we did it. Very, very close game and a perfect opponent there. I think Senju did a lot of abusive things, which was really well done. GG, well played. All right, guys, we haven't really had a chance to show you guys the 12 pool proxy racks or proxy gate reaction. So we're just going to immediately open to another game versus Bullia. We're going to get him to proxy four gate zealot. I know it's coming. But it's fine. I'm going to play completely standard this time. And this is basically, if you see, you get there with your drone, the spawning pool's finished. You get there, there's no barracks or gateways in their base. We're going to have to snap into the most extreme reaction available. And that is exactly what we're doing this game, okay? So, Nigel goes across the map. We're building a drone. We build an overlord. Nigel's little brother goes down our natural and then out the front. And then we're going to build one more drone, who's going to be our scout. He's going to scout the enemy main, come back to mine from our main. All right, so we've got our start. Let's set up the camera location on the natural, the third, and the fourth. Stop there, because I know I don't have time. Build two more drones, build another drone. And then we can do the fifth base and the camera location. I'm playing a little bit fast, so I'll slow down, guys. Let's grab a drone, go down to the natural to take that expansion. We're just doing our normal build, twiddling me thumbs, doop de doop de doop get the hatchery down. And remember, guys, there is a set trigger, and that trigger will be when you scout, remember, you're just looking. I keep saying earlier, you're seeing, are there buildings in their base? And if not, that's when we do the big reaction. So I'm not going to look at it straight away. I'm going to look at it a little bit later this game, guys. Just to, just to show you guys a slow reaction, which is usually what you guys are going to do. Build your gas. Build that spawning pool. Whoa! No buildings in the base. Oh god, oh god, what do we do? Pull off gas is one thing, and don't drone past 19 drones, okay, guys? So we're actually just not going to rally onto gas because we haven't put on yet. <clears throat> we're going to build 19 drones. We're then going to build an overlord, and then we're going to build two queens, as many links as we can make, and two spine crawlers, okay? So one overlord. And whoa, what's that? Oh, it's proxy gate. Proxy four gate zealot. So don't build the spines on the natural. If we lose the natural, that's totally okay. Our only job here is to survive. So we're going to build the spines in the mineral line. <clears throat> and we may need to even fight with our, uh, our units. But first, two queens, non-stop zerglings. Oh, we accidentally built two queens on the same hatchery. So lots of zerglings, control group them, lots of zerglings. And then we're going to get a spine. And you want them as far back as possible so these zealots can't kill them. Like I said, we might need to fight with our drones. So put them on army group two and a move. And then we're going to build another spine back there. And we're not doing any fancy micro guys, though technically we should be. And we're going to use our control group to send the drones back to mining. And then we're going to keep making zerglings. Now this is a very specific scenario that's quite scary. So what you want to do is you want to actually click your lings across the map. The moment they're not up in your face killing your drones, click them across the map. Control click the lings. Alt. Eight. Remember? And then we're going to try and run our other queens and lings back up into our main. Keep building lings. And remember, or control alt 7, sorry. These guys, we're going to click those back here behind the mineral line. Don't click them in the mineral line or they'll die. Now our queens here, we're going to inject. And we're going to put those on our creep slash defense key, okay guys? And we're going to spread a creep tumor. And then hide back up here behind the spines while continuing to do nothing but build zerglings, okay? Now, that's fine. We're going to lose our base. Why didn't these guys go in the base? Ooh! Bulia did a clever emergency wall off, but that's all free kills. So we'll A move there, and then we'll move behind the minerals again, okay? Because like I said, behind the minerals is where we can't get surrounded. Now we're still doing nothing but building zerglings here. And it looks like those zealots are going home. So we're going to try and send these lings down and see if we can depower these gateways. And oh, the zealots at home. Okay. These guys are just going to run away, guys. We're going to run away to the corner of the map ready for a run by. And we'll micro these guys, okay? Oh, look, the zealots there. Let's see if we can surround. So we move past and we do an A move. 
can't micro that anymore, so let's go inject, build more Zerglings, build an Overlord where supply block, and let's try to focus on this. Now notice there's two pylons, so you want to grab some of your Zerglings and shift click them onto the other pylon. And these lings run away. Because we don't really want to fight this, right? Notice the zealots are really good, so click them in up there and steal onto number seven. Alt seven. Now these lings, we depowered it, run back to our main base, keep hiding. <clears throat> Let's build another overlord. And at this point, this has gone too long, so we need roaches. So we're gonna put on gas and take a second gas and a roach warren. In a really desperate one base scenario, that's one of your best tools, is the uh, the one base. But because we just saw no zealots around, we can also try and expand, so we can try to get back to a normal game. And now we see the zealots back at the front. Nigel is doing the god's work, which means these guys can go in. So we're gonna A move there again. And this overlord's gonna sit to see if my opponent repowers those, okay? For now, we're gonna build drones, put on the gas. Build drone, put on the gas, keep injecting. We can try to spread creep, but we're not going to because I'm a gold league player. And let's try and break that. You can see the zealots coming in. Totally fine to just cancel. Can I fight that with nine zerglings versus nine zealots? Nope. Run away. Get that drone back. What's happening up here, guys? Are we able to get in? Okay. All right. Well, that's awesome. So these guys can now fight. Oh, I think we've... Oh, that's too many. We can't fight that. All right, let's go kill these gateways because he just recalled all his zealots. So these guys click back to the corner. These guys kill the gateways. And let's try and take our hatchery again. And we're going to build roaches, okay? So we're building roaches now. And we should add those all to our main army. So we've got main army on the left, backstab on the right. You see how learning Ling Bane is going to make us such a better StarCraft player in so many scenarios? Because we've already learnt the key mechanic for splitting our army up as a set core of how we play Zergling styles. And that is what's so goddamn beautiful, right? Now we can also move spines to the low ground, <clears throat> which means we can actually defend this base and spread the creep as well. Now we did see something else earlier, right? Let's drone up our base and let's just resume a normal game, shall we? Now you might wonder why roaches. Shouldn't you have gone banelings? And you guys are absolutely right. Since we're used to playing banelings, we probably should have done that. Let's make ling speed. And uh, and uh, we should have gone banelings. That would have actually been a good idea. As long as the zealots are clumped, they would have been good. Now we can see an oracle there. <clears throat> we can group our whole army together now. And see if we can do an attack of roachling. Behind it, we'll build a spore crawler in each base. And we'll try to drone up our expansion now. We can move this queen up here to help defend. Nigel's going to move forward and see what we're up against. And we're just droning, droning. And then we can inject. Cersei can go to the natural. Those spine crawlers can move down. And we can send a drone out to the third to, to take that soon. Okay, guys, I think it's time for an attack. An oracle will do good damage. But if we can deny this expansion, then that's huge. Super pro move would be to actually move my roaches in first to tank the damage and then let my zerglings attack. But we weren't able to do it. GG. So that was really fascinating because zealots in large numbers wreck zerglings. But what's really cool is the beginning. And this is the most important part. Because this, you guys apply at every league. In every matchup, every situation. It doesn't have to be a proxy 4-gate zealot. This could be proxy barracks marine. <clears throat> this could be a 12 pool. You're going to do the exact same response initially. Which is, what did we say? Don't put on gas. Build queens. Build zerglings. Drop two spines. From there, you're going to need to adapt to the situation. But that initial set opening is so, so huge, guys. This bit here, stop building drones, make an overlord, pull off gas, and when your spawning pool's done, queens, make as many lings as you can, get two spines, more overlords, non-stop lings. Also, don't inject the hatchery, save energy for transfuse is quite a good move, especially in Zerg vs Zerg, as we saw earlier. But from there, you're going to need to adapt based on the situation and your own understanding. We showed some pretty cool advanced stuff here. You might be saying, I can't do all that, dude. 
Pig, you did, you're saying you're in Gold League, but you did a lot of advanced maneuvers. I did. This is a Diamond 2 player. Now, don't get me wrong, he left his pylons a bit exposed and let them get depowered. He screwed up there. If he was able to split his zealots a little bit better, would have been would have been harder. But that this is a Diamond 2 player. He's playing infinitely better than anyone you'll be playing in Gold League. And uh, very similar response to what I would do in GM. The main difference here is I would not have lost nearly as many drones. So, what I would do here, instead of just A-moving my drones, guys, I would have pulled the drones back by right-clicking on that mineral patch here. The zealots would chase, and as they get to about here, I would right-click the drones on this mineral patch. They would phase through the zealots, and then I would attack move as they're on top of the zealots, so all the drones attack at once. They get a perfect surround, and kill them very quickly. Instead, I just A-moved them, and I let like three or four drones die. Three kills, two kills, five... Yeah, there's about five drones died. Whereas I could have been at 17 drones after that and not lost a single drone. The other micro that I could have done there, which also would have been very effective, is basically you A move your drones and then you just select a drone, click it back. Select a drone, click it back. Select a drone, click it back. As soon as you... As, as soon as a drone stops attacking, it loses attack priority and the zealots will change target to something else that has an attack command. That way, your drones can all take two hits, get here to eight hit points, and then back away. And you can do that quickly enough where you're not waiting for the units to take damage. A lot of people wait and they go, oh, which one's taking damage? And then they try to click it and pull it back too late. You can see when the fight starts, the zealots are attacking above them. Just click a random drone above them, click it back. Click a drone above them. And this becomes like a muscle memory habit. Very advanced micro, which is why we didn't do it here, but just one of those nice little cherries on top that you guys can add later on. Why would you click the lings behind the minerals? You said they don't die. I don't get what you mean. So when you're behind the minerals, they can't be surrounded easily because there's no minerals that the enemy can mineral walk through to. If you're sitting in the middle of the mineral line, they can click on the minerals on the natural, phase through your zerglings, surround them, and kill them when you're not looking very easily. But if you're attacking from behind the mineral line through the gaps, only a few lings are exposing themselves at a time, and there is no way the probes can mineral walk on them. The probes basically would have to split manually around the sides using very advanced micro and then flank in from two or three sides, much harder for your opponent to execute. So if you queue the lings behind the mineral line, it's a way of making sure they're messing up the mine and killing the enemy workers being a big nuisance without you having to actively micro them and without the danger of them getting surrounded. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people don't do that because they see pros just, just monitor the micro and go, and try to react perfectly. But even as a pro, you'll notice sometimes uh, in TVT, for instance, or whatever matchup, the Reaper goes and stands just behind the gas in the mineral patch, because that's essentially, there's nowhere to mineral walk onto that. And it's it's, it's like, and if, and if you're in the choke point of the minerals and they aim move workers, only one worker can hit it at a time, which is awesome as well when you're in that gap between the minerals. What was the, would the response have been to that charge lot all in before? Uh, Bezos was like, should you wall off and focus the prism with Queens? Just have more Ling Bane. Just start building Ling Bane earlier. That's it. Whenever you guys die to a surprise attack and you have 20, 30 workers more than your opponent, it's just you way overbuilt workers. Just don't, don't be like, yeah, oh, maybe if I do a triple layered Evo wall off. Yeah, no, no. no, just just go back to like, okay, how could I have got the information? Oh, okay. If I overlord sacrificed, I would have seen five gateways coming up really early. And then I could start building army straight away when I see that. Would have had enough Ling Bane. And you'd be good. Keep it simple. All right, guys, we're playing a Terran player here, Pastel Black. Uh, let's just keep focusing on these basics, working on splitting up that army, which has been such a big thing. And while we play this game, I want to talk to you guys a little bit. So I'm not going to mention what I'm doing in the opening as much because I want to talk about the minimap really quickly during this opening stage. So muscle memory is something we talked about in the first session. And there's a whole section. I wrote some notes on muscle memory, um, specifically in response to the fact that someone asked me, they said, hey, Pig, um, I'd love to hear, and this was in the comment section of the Bronze Silver one, they said, about looking at the minimap. When should I look at the minimap? When should I check it? And I was thinking about it. I was like, and I wrote them a response. And then I realized, hey, this is a pretty good thing that I should be teaching everybody, right? And the response basically boiled down to this. The better you know your build, the better you are at watching the minimap, right? So this is this, is this crazy thing which people don't, they often go, man, I'm not, I'm not good at watching my minimap. And I always go, look, the more unfamiliar the situation is, the more crazy and thrown off your game you are, the worse you'll be at watching the minimap. Whoa, what's that? Oh my God. Okay, that's, 
Okay, we're getting proxied of some sort. That's that's way too close. All right, guys, let's show you guys a nice little reaction, shall we? Now, we could attack that with drones and probably kill the SCV. We're not going to. We're going to imagine we've scouted it a little bit late, shall we? So let's put three guys on gas. And then, I mean, to be fair, there is a barracks at home, so this isn't like the most committed build. Hard to gauge exactly how much we should respond. We're going to build a 20 overlord. Put that over here. I don't know if this is Reaper or not. That's another barracks, though. Okay, so we're going to put this overlord on the pillar so it's safe from marines popping out, guys. And we're going to save our lava to build, you guys know what, lings, 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 and queens. Oh, accidentally built two queens. Got to be patient. Remember, the natural hatchery is a little late sometimes. So we're building lings. And you can also always throw down a spine crawler, guys. There's nothing wrong with building a spine if your opponent's in your face. And remember, we even said two spines. Let's pull off gas and do two spines, shall we? Um, I don't know if it's marines or reapers yet. So we'll build another spine. And let's see if we can go out here. And I'm just building lings, lings, lings. It is reapers, okay. So against reapers, this is a specific scenario where we will need ling speed. So we're going to put back on gas. Spine Krill has taken a bit of damage, so we don't want that to die, guys. We're going to just aim with the lings, and then we're going to bring our queens down. Remember, we don't want the queens to actually um, just run away now. We don't want them to inject, because we want to save that energy for transfuse, okay? Now, because Reapers can jump up ledges, we're going to need the queens to watch over here on that side, and the spines will guard the front, okay? Behind it, what are we going to do? Two more queens and drones because these queens have to cover up here along with these zerglings spines will easily cover the natural but uh we just need to basically guard the ledge so we've got the lings the queens and that should defend itself i don't even need to look at that guys so we're building overlords we're going to make ling speed here and we're going to rally back to this base and we're just going to go back to droning okay oh we're going to send our lings down here try to run your drones away guys and we're going to bring these queens over and we're going to e-move the lings and queens, keep building drones, keep building drones off our hatcheries. And our queens and our lings should be able to kill a bunch of these reapers. Alright. Spread that creep over there. Inject, inject. Put guys back on mining. And let's move this spine crawler up so it's harder to get in. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you gold lings. So this was kind of weird, guys, because this was in between. So this is actually, I think, a good example because there's weird stuff that happens in the ladder. Um, when in doubt, go with the more conservative response. So in general, if they're proxying buildings, like I said, go with the conservative response, pull off gas and that sort of stuff. The thing is, if it's Marines, Marauders, fighting units, you need that. The reason I put back on gas is Reapers are more of a run around in circles unit and that sort of stuff. We did use the double whip there, um, which is very good. So it would have been nice if I just let myself get enough gas for ling speed and that sort of stuff. But the important thing here is build a few spines. Um, and even more, ideally, if when I first saw this, if I just pulled a few drones and a move down here, say three, four drones, I would have killed the SCV building the barracks and stopped this push before it even started. So <clears throat> definitely a big mistake from Pastel Black. They should have built the barracks further back up there or even better down here because then it's right next to the ledge where they can jump in the base. But uh, building it so close and on the wrong side of the base, big mistakes for Pastel. It's always good to have some nice cheeses and weird all-ins mixed in. But we show that just building queens and lings and two spines keeps you safe. From there, you do want to adapt. So, versus the Reaper Rush, I decided once I got the queens and lings, stopping him jump in. Two spines, he can't really run past without losing a bunch of Reapers. Go back to droning, making ling speed, and I would have then... Once I had ling speed, I would have been able to chase the Reapers off, start a third base... If he actually builds a bunch of bunkers, maybe I have to break out with spine crawlers, spreading creep forwards and moving the spines to break the bunkers. Uh, maybe make some banelings as well. But <clears throat> there we go. Awesome, guys. Good little practice run. Um, so to talk about the minimap, basically, <clears throat> if you're really well practiced with your injects, when I'm injecting, guys, when I'm going, inject the main, inject the natural, do 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 do, I'm looking at the minimap, basically in between every single action, and the more organized I am, the easier it is to watch the minimap and the more constantly I'm glancing at it. Ah, oh, a queen count that you're aiming for in bronze to GM. Is it legit? If in doubt, build a queen? No. I mean, if you want to, you could play however you want, Pete Game. So basically, um, the rule is where we're literally just playing three queens just for injecting. 
uh, until we get to, unless we, unless we see air units and we need to build more queens, right? Unless we see air units. The one exception uh, being if we see air units. And then as we get to Platinum League, the next league, we're going to start building Freddie, Freddie Mercury, which is a fourth and fifth queen whose job is spreading creep and defending. And that's going to get us really used to always having those queens on a defense key. Um, and then as we get to probably like Diamond and Zerg versus Terran, queens are really useful. Uh, sometimes versus Protoss when they open air. We'll often add a few. I don't know what the name of the other queen members were. I don't know. I guess we'll probably name them that. But any extra queens will probably just be the the other band members. We'll just call them like drummer, bassist, that sort of thing, you know. Yeah. I find just inject queens harder because if I use them to defend, they get lost. Yeah, that's why you just don't use them to defend. You use your army peak game. If you do have to pull them off for air units, then obviously you do need to... Uh, you do need to build more queens potentially but that's that's why generally though we're just kind of trying to defend with ground the problem is that low mmr people are so uh struggling with the production we really need to keep things to a minimum and it has to be about oh they're coming with army i build army i overwhelm all right guys let's go we're in a zerg versus zerg we're gonna send a drone across the map and then we're gonna send a drone down to take a hatchery that drone scout is a little late but that's okay um, try to be consistent with that, but we're just answering questions in Twitch chat, so sometimes I am a little bit slow on the start. We've got the hatchery up, add to hotkey, make control group, build two more drones, and let's make sure those camera locations are up. Third base, fourth base, fifth base, and the rally point down there on the natural. We'll go for the gas in the pool in a moment. There we go. And we're going to rally onto the gas the next three drones. What do we see, guys? Hatch first. Cool. Looks totally standard. Technically, we can scout for the pool timing, but there's really no need to. All right. Check it out, guys. We've got this guy here. We're going to go across the map because in ZVZ, it's really nice to have two overlords outside their base. So if they come out with a queen and push one of them back, the other one's still up front defending. That should have been an overlord there, but that's okay. Not a big deal. And this overlord will go out front. So in ZVZ, as you get better, we are going to have slightly flexible overlord positionings. It's not as important to get overlords on the edges because Zerg air units don't come in as early as the other races, right? That's actually pretty big. Let's build four Zerglings here. Our opponent's going in a bit deep with this Overlord. If that doesn't turn around soon, they will lose it. He's going to scout in the main base as well. Very ambitious, my good sir. Alright guys, we've got Ling Speed on the way. We're building some more drones. Let's take a drone and go down to that third base and take it. That Overlord's going to fly in and die. It's amazing, I find... All the way up to, like, Diamond 3, how many people just throw their Overlords away every game in this matchup? I kind of want to let it live, but uh, also not. I'm just going to... Nah, I mean, that's silly. If he loses the Overlord, he loses the Overlord. <laughs> Alright, guys, we've got that third base on the way. Let's go build Latifa, get an Overlord, put that out over the side of the third, and back to droning. That's right, come back here and inject... Ooh, a few lings are coming across the map. That's interesting, guys. And a few more. So let's build that spine crawler. We were meant to build that anyway after building Latifa. And check it out, guys. We've got a lot of guys coming. So what are we going to do? Move the queens to the ramp. Build a lot of zerglings here. And what do we got? Lots of lings coming in and banelings. Okay, so these guys are on hold position. Just going to make sure that's all good. Try and build another spine back here. And guys... What you want to do with Latifa is she's going to hide here, hold position, okay? So our, our Zerglings are going to fight. Because Banelings are coming in, you want to try and spread your Zerglings out. We failed to spread the Zerglings out, guys. <laughs> I was trying to do it real slow. I was like, maybe I can do this, but like real slow. But notice here, the Queens are able to actually support each other because I didn't inject. We talked about this in the earlier ZVZ when we got in trouble. How if you don't inject, your life's going to be a lot better. Put them back on the ramp, though. <clears throat> They're not an old position because I want to let the queens down. And we're going to move this to the front. Now, all of the queens, when you're defending in this scenario, you put them all on the creep defense key and you keep on building queens. So we've got three fighting queens and we're building three more to become the new 
the new queens. Now, I built some drones just then, but is that really a good idea? Well, looks like Dave is going to fight on the front, and that's a big mistake. Now, pro move here is to focus the Banes down, but we're not going to do that, okay? Looks like my opponent's pretty committed, so I'll build another spine here. And we'll move those queens forward. Pro move is to focus the Banes. We're not going to do that. We're just going to drop transfusers. And we're building lots more Zerglings, guys. And we're going to try to uh, just A-move our Lings as they hop over there. And it's dealt with. All right. Inject. Inject. And there we go. Whoo! If that Spine Crawler was up earlier, we would have been in a good position. But we forgot the Spine Crawler this game. And this 18 drone Zergling Baneling all in almost got us. So remember, guys. Drop the third hatch. Start Latifah. Latifah starts up, build an Overlord, and then build the Spine Crawler before building all these drones. I built three, four drones, and then put the Spine out. It's only about 10 seconds difference, but you can see if they flood in here with Ling Vei, and that 10 seconds makes a pretty big difference. Now, notice as well where I built my other Spine Crawler. It's a much safer position here. It's kind of behind the Mineral Line, so if he's got a bunch of Lings here and he clicks on it or A moves, they're only going to be able to attack it one at a time unless they move around the back of the Mineral Line by moving through here or over here. Notice also the queens don't transfuse, which means three minutes 40 or so, 3.45, we have transfusers available, which is game changing. If I was super pro, those first Zerglings, I would have spread out ahead of time. So rather than A moving your lings, whenever there's banelings around, I'll show you guys what you do here the next time. It's something, it's never too early. Even here, we know there's banes coming. We already saw the morphing. All your Zerglings, you can click them here and then you box half of them click them like down here really far apart and then try to grab a few more of them and click them like all the way just really have them spread very far away so that they don't clump up for the banelings and they'll be way more effective instead they took a great fight first the zerglings and then they headbutted onto a baneling and got themselves killed weren't too effective right but notice also latifa went and held position in between the mineral line and this is the secret to early game zvz a lot of people will say, how do I defend this in ZVZ? How do I defend that? The key is choke points and queens in choke points. Using old position, whether on the ramp or if you can't get in the ramp here. If your opponent does a one base Ling Bane, you actually have to build like an Evo chamber here at high levels. You probably don't, you can get away without it and, and get a queen there. And then they'll try to go around the bottom of your mineral line and you actually like plug this by putting a zergling on hold position there and a zergling on hold position there and they can't get into your mineral line and you can run out the other side of the mineral line as the banelings come in and your queens shoot them down and you can use this is why the spawning pool we like to place here even better because this is the side where they're going to come it would have been better guys in zvz if you put the spawning pool on the side of your hatchery facing the ramp because then you put a queen there and when the ling bane comes in they can't get in past the queen in the spawning pool all the little details make a ridiculous amount of difference in Zerg vs Zerg for just giving you the little bit of time you need because Zerglings are not a solid army, they're a high damage army. Anything you can do to limit their surface area until you get your own units out is going to be a game changer. An absolute game changer. Even the first Ling engage you over micro a lot, says Eon Blue. You mean that one there? You think I over micro that? Wait, what did I do? All I did was click him back, didn't I? Didn't I just A-move here? Oh, Dave over micro. Oh, okay, you were giving advice to Dave. I was like, I, I, I didn't cheat. I think we followed this really well. Yeah, so Dave just... The big problem Dave had here is Dave isn't using control groups. So playing Ling Bane Aggression without control groups is a fool's errand. You can kind of do it, but it kind of sucks. Um, it, it'll work a lot of the time. But it's super sloppy. What could I do better here? Use control groups um, is the number one thing. So I actually have a, a few videos about Ling Bane, which you guys should definitely check out. And I actually really advise Ling Bane aggression as a great way to get even better with control group management. Um, so you guys, if you want to watch that, go Google. I'll show you guys how to Google it right now. Pig Ling Bane coaching. Or you can go to my Twitch chat and type exclamation mark Bane. And there's a Ling Bane micro coaching video and a Formula to Good Ling Bane micro, which really methodically, even though it's old and doesn't have some of the control group stealing, it talks about the theory of like spreading your Banelings out really well. So this video here is really fantastic. Um, 
This is from six years ago now, but it's all super relevant. 2017. Uh, yeah. Coaching a Begetta. Who are we coaching? Oh, Lulu. It's been a long time. Back on King Sejong Station. This is an old, old video. Hey, we were sponsored by AMD back then. Our okay. team was. Still so sponsored by AMD. Have you had a chance to look at the um, build order yet? Let's not give too much free exposure to Razer and stuff. They don't sponsor me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, go check that video out. It's like a 55 minute coaching session with a student from back then where I just go through in detail like, hey, this is how you control group. This is how you split your units up. You want your banelings to always be on move command towards a worker line. And then you just micro your zerglings to kind of find the correct targets. Because I didn't have any banelings. In that scenario, it would have actually been really simple what Dave should have done. Dave should have clicked the banelings onto the spine. Shouldn't have gone in with the zerglings at all. Should have waited for the banes. So the banes should have led the charge. They should have shift clicked on the spine and then into the middle of the drones and zerglings to try and blow them up. And then the lings could have just basically A moved. Get some lings attacking the queen, some lings killing everything else. Split a few lings around the back of the mineral line to kill this queen and the spine crawler. Problem is, we waste most of our Zerglings before the Banelings even get there, and then we're microing the Banelings and Zerglings as if they're the same unit, which is really nasty. Whereas if those Banes were just shift-clicked from that spine and then onto that spine, and we just micro our Lings, we go, okay, half of you attack there, half of you come down and fight down here, probably would have been able to cause a big ruckus. I might have even lost my natural. Not necessarily, but I might have. Um, you know, it would have been a much closer, closer fight here. Because this Spine Crawler... I could have transfused that spine as well, by the way. There is an argument there that transfusing the spine was way more valuable than transfusing the queens because the spine crawler has two armor. Queens only have one. And it does a lot more damage than the queens as well. So if I kept that spine up with a transfuse, that probably would have been worth it. How do you split your groups for Ling Bane? Ling's on one, all Bane's on number two. Easy peasy. All right, guys, we're up against a minority right now. And you know what we like to, us pigs like to do to minorities? Beat them up, yeah. Oh, sorry guys, can't resist. Lame joke presents itself. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, all right. Overlord Nigel's little brother comes down out front the natural. <laughs> uh, fourth base, fifth base, and the camera location. on the way. And we're gonna send that drone across the map. Bring that back. Send another drone down to expand. I didn't realize you were a dad now. Congratulations, says Stallion. What can I say? I haven't spawned any children, but the bad jokes just keep spilling out of my mouth. Got a hatchery there on the natural goes down. Shift one, double tap, send to the camera location. And let's build these droney drones. <clears throat> Next is gas and spawning pool. <coughs> Hope we edit that out for the YouTube video. I don't care if that's in, that's fine. I mean, obviously it's a joke. I don't think that would get picked up by any silly AI scouring videos for bad words. I hope not. Who knows? All right, guys. Enemies' buildings are in their base. So all standard. We've rallied three workers to gas. And that's all good. Now remember, what we're doing with the Overlord is we're going in and then um, see if there's... Basically just checking what's at the front and then going out and then ready for sacrifice. And that's what we're doing every game. Let's build another Overlord, put this one out here, move that guy forward a little bit. <clears throat> and we can always run Zerglings forward here to see if there's a Nexus or not. Keep that in mind. What the hell? Whoa! Okay, okay. All right, this overlord's gonna go right in there, guys. Uh, let's go. Oh, I keep building two queens accidentally. Don't panic with that, guys. All right, we're gonna try and build a spine down here. And they're trying to build shield batteries, which is really interesting, guys. Okie doke. So this seems like a, a sort of slow proxy push. So we are gonna pull off gas, but we've already made 100 for wing speed. Because this is not hitting me too fast. It looked like a normal build. This is a fake normal build. It's actually a weird proxy. We'll move this overlord out here to see what's going on. And you know what, guys? What do we always do? Grab our army. Because if there's no urgency on us defending, we're just going to click our lings across the map. Okay, so we went Alt-7 
and we're going to click those over on that pylon. And then we're going to inject, inject, move the spine crawler to the front, and build nothing but zerglings and control two, okay? Thank you for making B2G and oh. guides big. Oh. Thanks for making a link being Overlord's going to die. Three. I'm going to try to build as many overlords as I can here, guys, to uh, build in the back. And it looks like. What is this? Alright, guys. So we're going to try and kill the zealot. So we moved past and then did an A move. Always move past for the surround. And then we're going to click that pylon and then shift click to break that wall as well. Now behind it, inject, inject, build zerglings. And what we're going to do, remember, this is a very technical situation where they're building a fortress outside our base. So what we want to do is we want to make another round of units. And when they pop, we're going to attack move at my opponent's shit. I can move a spine forward to try to help as well. But look at this. We're just waiting for the eggs to pop. And then we're going to attack move, okay? And then we're going to do another round of injects. Build another overlord or two and just keep building lings. And now we can look at what's happening down there. And what do we do? Panic click? No, don't do that. Grab some lings and just split them off. That's always it, guys. All right. Now notice we can only fight there with a few. So grab the other lings and just click on one of the buildings. All right, what do we do, guys? Inject, inject. Build Zerglings. We actually did that a few seconds too early. So let's try again. Inject, inject. Oh, look at that, guys. And then these Zerglings. So what are we doing? Double tap seven. Double tap one. Double tap seven. And then these guys. If we don't want to micro them, remember, behind the mineral line. They can't get surrounded. And you can just leave them. And they will not get surrounded. Whereas if we sent them in from this side opponent can surround them he can pull back and mineral walk or he can mineral walk to the natural and surround them so whenever you want to just click links behind your opponent's base guys you want to click him back there okay inject inject build links all right very clever idea for minority everyone's trying to be very tricky today um against me we're not having many straight up and this is generally what you find until you get to the higher leagues most cheeses rushes and general all-ins and scary weird builds they're not executed to the craziest high level because people have only done them a few times, if at all. Um, so don't worry. You guys can make a lot of uh, mistakes with your responses and you'll still be able to deal with it. This is the second time someone proxied way too close to that expansion. And that's why it's really nice to put those overlords a bit further forward. All right, guys, I have no idea if we're playing against aggression or defense. I do know that Thraven is a platinum player at almost 3k MMR. So I have no idea what they're going to do. Uh, we obviously did ask for a few aggressive builds earlier. I wasn't sure exactly which games were going to be aggressive. But I specifically said doesn't matter if this is still aggressive or not. And uh, we'll see how it goes. A platinum player, a big jump up in skill. 3k is like platinum 1 almost, I believe. At least platinum 2. So we've got a drone. Let's build another overlord. We'll build one more drone. And we can go... Natural camera location, third base, Thanks fourth for the Bezos base, box. fifth base, and the sixth base. Remember, if you guys prefer to take this as your third and expand in a different pattern, totally up to you. I don't like this because of the, um, let's send the drone scout and back home. I don't like to do that because they can drop the high ground and hit your workers from the high ground and then you go all the way around to defend and then they drop the low ground. That, that just annoys me. So that's why I don't like to take the triangle base and why I like to expand in a straight line along the map. But it's up to you. There's advantages and disadvantages to every type of expansion pattern. All right, guys, we've got the natural there. <clears throat> and we're building a couple more drones. So this is actually platinum one, Chad is telling me. Wow. Okay, should be a lot of fun then. <clears throat> just following our normal build here guys and remember we started talking about it earlier but when it comes to watching the minimap <clears throat> in between actions look at the minimap now what am i oh hello two gases and no barracks guys Ooh -wee. so sometimes players hide their barracks near their base but otherwise it's somewhere else so we're just going to go for a nice full scout our overlord will sit over here let's keep droning put on the gas this guy, I've just queued to, to scout around the map a little bit, and then he'll come home and mine. So that means it's a proxy, guys, which means pull off gas <clears throat> normally. Now, the reason why when we're at higher level we wouldn't pull off gas here is because we actually know that this is a double gas version, which means it's not going to hit very hard initially. 
and having more tech would actually be fantastic for us. All right, guys, we're going to build two queens, four zerglings, and <clears throat> we're going to send this drone around the edges until it finds what the hell is going on, okay? Uh, apparently, I misclicked these drones, so they're not mining. And okay, there's a reaper, so we'll just rally our drones on our lings onto it. Keep droning here, keep droning. And a reaper, it's not mass marine, it's not mass zealot. Let's put back on gas. And I was gonna build uh, two spines, uh, I would normally build as well. We'll build a spine crawler this time. So this is interesting because this is very different to a mass all in. And we found it now, so let's pull back. Inject, inject. And uh, the question is, how do you respond to this, guys? And I really don't know. I am I am very unsure, because this is kind of a very committed proxy, but also we need tech to deal with it. So let's think about what we should do. Number one, do we still build a third base? Yeah. I think we go back to droning. The moment you know it's not Zealots, Marines, Massling Bane, we still build a third base. We're not planning to drone it. We're just building it for the production. Let's A-move our Zerglings towards this. Just keep A-moving them, making sure this is followed. And we go back to inject, inject. And we're going to build a few more drones. I think 30 drones is enough. It's more than enough. Let's make Ling Speed. We've also got Latifa here, who's going to inject and go down. And from here, we don't really know what the follow-up is. We'll click an Overlord through the base. We'll click this Overlord here. We're going to build a few more Overlords and start massing Zerglings. Because like I said, 30 drones should be more than enough. And Oh, it's Hellions! What? It's Hellions and Reapers for a proxy. This is crazy. Let's send the Queen over there. Uh, we'll try and fight this with some Zerglings. Massing those Zerglings. Inject, inject. And a third base. Now remember, a third base is a production facility. A lot of Zergs go, oh, they're rushing me. I can't take a third. But a third is a production facility. Let's make a Baneling Nest and that second gas as well. We're still doing nothing but Massinglings. We'll put on drones on gas straight away. And what have we got on the other side of the map? A command center. So this is just a pressure, guys. And oh, a Liberator. Remember what we do versus Liberator, guys? Spore Crawler in every base. We'll get one in the third as well. But if you're building spores, you're killing drones. So that's a bit of an issue. Build inject, build inject, build inject, and then hold the drone key down. And this is where things get kind of fascinating. Why are you going back to drones? Well, we just built a bunch of structures that killed a lot of drones. We need to replace those. And we've seen a command center. So we know my opponent is not committed that hard anymore. Let's pull the lings back and hide them, guys. And now we're going to A-move those lings, and we'll move a spore crawler forward as well. Now, obviously, we should have moved forward there, and we could have shut that down. Let's keep building Zerglings, because I could have actually dragged the Widowmine into his army. But because we just A-moved, we didn't see the Widowmine. I'm a Gold League player. We went, ah, lesson learnt for next time, you know? So we want to A-move the drones. No, it looks like he's going to run away. Let's keep injecting, keep injecting. Those Reapers are still in my main base. Let's build more Zerglings. It looks like there's a Liberator here for some reason, guys. So my opponent's getting very fancy. So when your opponent's getting fancy, you go, man, what do I do? Against a proxy, the most important thing is get rid of the proxy. Either go kill it or go kill them. So we could just grab some Lings. A move the main. We know he's taken an expansion. And the other Lings, plus the Rally of Zerglings, will try to overwhelm the production, okay? If we can kill this, this is a significant part of my opponent's production. It'll be game over. Now, he's already lifting home, so it looks like he already knew that was going to be the case. So we'll go across the map as well. We can add number select number seven, go shift two. So this is my whole army now. A move it here. Looks like the damage has been done. A move it there. And let's go home. Inject, inject, inject. Hold the drone key down. Na natural's mostly saturated, so let's rally there. Let's build two macro hatcheries. Oh, you can see there's not many drones on this base, guys. So we're going to have to fix up my saturation, aren't we? I'll do that after the next macro cycle. For now, we could make Banelings and kill him, but let's just back off and reset our macro. Okay, guys? Inject, inject, inject. And what are we going to do? We're going to build a bunch of drones. We need at least seven in the main. The natural needs a few drones. But we, we're supply block. So we'll build a few more overlords first. And what's next? Lair and two Evo chambers. I don't have enough money. We're just waiting for it. We click it down. And 
As these overlords pop, we can build a few more drones for this base. Build a few more drones for that base. Time for another macro cycle. Let's go, Lizzie! Inject that hatchery, Cersei! Paint it with your lava, baby. Um, sorry, that sounded really seedy. <laughs> Paint it with your lava. Ugh. Uh, build a few more overlords here as well. Let's get the Evo chambers upgrading. And since we don't know what's happening, let's send some Link Scouts out on the map, shall we? Let's make carapace and melee. So it's worth it. A lot of people, when you defend and attack, you go back to droning. But if you know they've got exposed production on the map, building enough army to counterattack that production, always worth it. It's a little situational as everything is in StarCraft, but generally speaking, it's a no-brainer. Inject, inject, inject. Build Zerglings. Build Overlords. And Baneling Speed will start up. We should have waited with 1-1 for Baneling Speed just to make sure. Because if you 99% of the time make 1-1 and Baneling Speed at the same time, but then you forget it. Because then you're going to forget every time. If you go 1-1, one, one, earlier one game, and then you go, you're go, you going to forget it. So it's important to link those together and be consistent. Random variants really can kick you in the butt in StarCraft. So try not to have random variants. Try to create these rhythms that you stick to, unless you've got a really good reason not to. There are some players who are a little bit more chaotically inclined and good at doing that. Um, I wouldn't advise you guys do it too often, though. Try to be more organized rather than chaotic. All right, guys, let's take a fourth base and a fifth base. See how those camera locations from the start of the game make this so easy? Camera location one, box drones. Camera location four, build, hatch, click. Camera location five, build, hatch, click. How easy is that? Box the hatchery, shift one. Set the rally point. Box the hatchery, shift one. Let's actually set the rally points to the fourth, shall we? Inject Lizzie, Cersei, Latifa. Let's do it, baby. And 1-1 one, one upgrades is done in about 20 seconds, as is Bane Speed. So by the time we get to the base, we'll be ready. So let's move across. You can imagine there's defense there. Let's run things up and see. All right, Liberators and Tanks. Those are units which we can't do that well against. So what are we going to do? Run home, rebuild. Just <laughs> Shut up, guys. <laughs> Transition. Guys, we'll just wait for these Banelings and then we'll go. Make sure we have enough to just blow the whole wall up and just get right in on top. Run past the Liberators. Liberators aren't that effective versus Ling Bane because they're small units, so they're, they're actually massively overkilling with every shot, which means their damage really isn't used that effectively. So we're trying to move in. A move. Move, move, move in. And A move. And there we go. That should be that, guys. If you want, you can box some units. Click them on the, uh, the, the, the depot here. You can see the Lings are actually blocking me on the, right, on the left, so I clicked on the right. And if you click the Banes in the mineral line, they're guaranteed to get good hits, right? See, so always try to click your Bane, at least some Banes into each mineral line, if you can. When making Banelings out of your army, do you aim for an appropriate, approximate number? So, um, Banelings are really good for killing, like, Hellbats, um, blowing up walls, planetaries, clumps of marines. Uh, any of those scenarios, you want probably more Banelings. Um... What's good about this build is you're so low on gas, you really can't make too many Banelings because if you're keeping your production up, you automatically just are limited by your gas. You've only got two gases, so it's hard to build too many. Generally, though, as our opponents get bigger, scarier armies, Banelings are more effective than Zerglings because Banelings can kind of get on top and kill just about anything if you have enough of them and enough of a money advantage. Whereas Zerglings fall off really hard once you get like Archon Colossus together. Whereas you can still roll Banelings into Archon Colossus. And if you have enough of a numbers advantage, you can win with Banelings. Whereas if they get like three Colossus, five Archons, you could send a million Zerglings at that. They'll never kill it. I find even with Lings in front and spread. Oh, I'm not going in front and spreading. Turtles have enough tanks to blow up my Banes. Nidus, they stop in their base due to them keeping army in their base. Upload a replay, mate. Upload a replay and get help from the community. These are, these are the sort of the questions where, where you, you know, you're like, okay, in this specific scenario, this thing happens. I, 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 can't, I can't read exactly what's happening in a game. So, sorry. Guys, please help Dark Matter. And Dark Matter, please actually post a replay. You'll get so much good advice and good discussion out of it. The Zerg discussion channel in my Discord, man. I want to see some replays uploaded there. All right, guys, going into a Zerg versus Zerg. Nigel's going to go in there and then come outside the base a little bit. Second Overlord goes over our natural and then straight across the map because it's ZVZ. So we're starting to get used to those different different patterns, aren't we, guys? 
those different patterns of Overlord Scouty. Just ever so slightly different in this matchup. The second Overlord goes across the map. So we can have Overlord 1 over here. Oh. Sorry. I accidentally just moved my drone. My, my bad. All right, quick. Let's go build the hatchery. I just got confused because my drone was on the, the hotkey, not the Overlord. All good. Fix that up. Build the natural. Shift 1. Double tap 1. Remake the camera location. Set the rally point. Then we're going to build... Another drone, 18 supply, gas and pool. And we can see a hatchery, so we know it's a normal build. No worries whatsoever. Is my opponent doing my build, guys? Is Cat's Bug doing my build? Looks awfully similar to what I'm doing. Alright, guys, two drones there on the gas. We'll rally this third one. And because we know we're going to rally that, look at that, guys. We can already set the rally point to the natural, knowing that we're going to manually rally that drone. The earlier you set your rally points and stuff, the better it is. Let's go get those camera locations. Third, fourth, fifth, and rally point. Beautiful. Let's build that 19 overlord, which will sit outside our natural. There's a pillar there, so if you really want, you can check the pillar. Make sure there's no enemy overlord there, then do that. You are programmer, StarCraft, my lord. Well, as always, finally, I've been asking for years, people in my Twitch chat to call me my lord. Finally, Franco comes in here with some actual respect, unlike the rest of you peasants. And uh, thank you. Yes, I am a StarCraft programmer. Um, 100%. Totally. Now we're going to make Link Speed now and keep making drones, guys. Make Link Speed, keep making drones. I have actually had people come to my channel like, oh, which part of the game did you code? I'm like, what? Like it says in your bio down below your stream that you're a programmer. Like that says pro gamer. And I'm like, oh. Um, gonna go take that third base. But not until we inject. Remember, guys, always inject. Inject. Lizzie, Cersei, and we're gonna get Latifah's house over there. Get ready. Latifah's gonna start building so she can head over. And we'll build that Overlord, which I like to put one Overlord in the middle of the map, because if you're fighting with Lings back and forwards, it's really nice to be able to see the center of the map. So you can see them leave their base, them arrive at your base, and just one Overlord in the middle will really round that out. Um, ooh, spine crawler! Remember the ZVZ adjustment, guys. So we want to build a spine crawler after all that at the front of our natural. Just a little bit of insurance. And then Lizzie, inject. Cersei, inject. Hold that drone key down! Yum, 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 yum. And then we want to build some more overlords. So we can get one out front, the third base, so we can see anything attacking there. And then we can just get another overlord down here. See if there's anything coming into our main. Latifah has arrived. She's going to move down to that third base. And we're going to keep building drones here, guys. And soon it'll be time for another inject. Cat's bug having a little bit of a perv from the high ground. I like it. Lizzie, inject! Cersei, inject. Hold that drone key down. Build another overlord. I can put this one up on the top. And guys, that means this natural is getting beyond saturated. So let's get a gas and a baneling nest. If you really want to, you can pull these drones back to mining. Look at that. That's kind of handy, right? Just chuck those on there. Build a few more drones onto that. And not the bed. And remember, next round we build a round of safety zergans. We haven't always been doing that today. We were doing that. We've been under so much aggression. We haven't, we've, we've kind of just been reacting to our opponents attacking us, and so we've skipped out on this. But now we swap into a big round of Zerglings for safety. Every single game we do this, once we get two base saturated, it's second gas, Bane Nest, round of safety Zerglings, and now we can drone that third base up, okay? If we want, we can put some Zergling Scouts out as well, just so we get an attack warning if our opponent does try to come to us. So we just use the deselecting to spread three Zerglings. I've been macroing a bit too well, so we're just going to AFK for 10 seconds while our cat jumps on our keyboard. The true Gold League player experience, guys. Alright, cat's pissed off. Let's go. Time for another inject. Lizzie, Cersei, and Queen Latifah. Let's build some more Zerglings. Build another Overlord. And, uh... Are we on full... Oh, that, that was meant to be drones. Whoops. That was a mistake, guys. That was meant to be drones. Let's go double Evo and double hatchery at the same time because I was floating about a thousand minerals. Let's make a lair as well. Let's grab those hatcheries. Shift one. And guys, let's try and build more drones for that third, shall we? Need a few more drones in the main first. But this inject cycle. Inject, inject, inject. 
full round of drones for that third base. And that should bring us up to about 54. Guys, you might have heard a noise just then. You might be wondering, what is that noise? Well, that noise is the sound of the Nidus Worm. The Nidus Worm is basically a cheat code. And what we're going to do is A move our drones. Oh, that queen's in the way. And A move our legs. And luckily, I accidentally built an extra round of Zerglings, which is making this hold incredibly easy. And we've swapped to Zergling production. Inject, inject, inject. Keep building Zerglings, keep building Zerglings. Once you've got your units fighting, I saw I had a surround. I said, well, there's not much else I can do here. I realized that was fine. So what do we do now? We control click the Zerglings, the drone, sorry. Get on the gas, get on the gas. Back to mining. Let's get our upgrades. Plus one melee, plus one carapace, mailing speed. What's that, guys? Oi! Oi! So what we're going to do now is we could probably counterattack because I have a giant army, right? I think we can do it, guys. Inject, inject. The power of good macro. I mean, I was droning as the attack came in. We're just going to build our last handful of drones here to get to 54 drones. Build some more lings. And we'll see if we can overwhelm. Oh, the wall is unguarded, guys. So what do we do? We click right into that main base. Accidental swarm host there. And we're just going to A move now that our units are kind of up. See, those units are still stuck, so we could still move those guys in deeper. These guys here are doing really well, though. And actually, they're trying to go Nidus Swarm as follow-up, which is really cute to make use of that uh, that Nidus Worm. Whenever you're done micring, inject, inject, inject. Build more Zerglings. And what else? Fourth base. Fifth base. Remember? Let me show you guys that one more time. You've got to get good at doing this. Jumped. You've done your injects. You've built your round of units. You've hotkeyed them. Box your workers. Fourth camera location, build hatchery. Fifth camera location, build hatchery. You don't need to reselect your drones or anything. That is such a useful tool. You've got to be getting good at that. Inject Lizzie, inject Cersei, inject Latifa. Now, obviously, if there was a big army, I would have backed off from this attack because we didn't have 1-1 one, one and Bane speed, guys. The reason we attacked there is because we crushed their army so one-sidedly that we felt we could just go across the map. So that was a pretty scary Nidus. I thought that was going to be a little bit uh, more painful for me. But the big problem my opponent made in this game is they didn't actually commit. So what happened here is Kat's actually built 40 workers, almost as many as I built, and is already building an infestation pit. Uh, pit. So what's really cool about Kat's is Kat's has already thought about a follow-up plan, which you should always have in StarCraft, each stage mapped out. Small problem, guys small problem you need to actually commit to the first thrust otherwise you're basically going Hua! you're in a fight with a guy and you go Hoo! and you go when i do my kung fu sound and i do this from the fucking 80s he's gonna freak out think i do kung fu and then he's gonna quickly run away try to find his gun because he knows he can't beat a kung fu master without his gun and i'm gonna counter that by then running over i'm gonna get this gun out first, and then I'll have the gun first. In this case, the gun is the Knight of Swarmhost. Small problem Catsbug had. When he went, Whoa! I punched him in the face and knocked a few teeth out, and he basically went, oh shit. Oh, I thought he would be scared of the Kung Fu sound. And that's what this was, because this is so overdroned and so much tech behind it with four gases and an infestation pit. It was only 12 roaches. 12 roaches and two queens at six minutes is not that scary an army. Appearing in my main seemed kind of scary, but notice as well, it wasn't even 12 roaches. He messed up and didn't unload all of them. And some of the, he didn't set the rally points into the Nidus Worm, so new units popping out weren't rallying, and he didn't unload. So it was seven roaches and two queens. So basically, like, whoa, whoa. I punched him in the face, and he had a really clever follow-up, but... The better way to do this would be to do it off less economy, super hard committed, full rally to the Nidus Worm, um, and, and do it off maybe three gases, hit a bit harder, a little bit more committed with like 15, 20 roaches at this timing. And then as those roaches, are, as the Nidus is thrown down and you've already built all the roaches, then drop the infestation pit. Because it's, it's like, okay, now I can start plan B. I've already... And, and do a round of injects, build more roaches, drop the infestation pit, and then go over there. Nidus finishes popping. Unload the roaches. 
and you got a good chance of killing me there if you were fully committed. You can also do a Nidus Worm off about 30 drones with two gases. So literally only eight drones on the natural, two gases, and just don't bother with roach speed because you're popping out in their base. You don't need roach speed and just as many roaches as you can. Also, don't bother with ling speed. Why would you bother with ling speed if you're not going to use it? So don't bother with ling speed. Uh, don't bother with roach speed. Get the Nidus way faster and you could actually be hitting this at like 420 and popping like 10 roaches out in my base and a lot more rallying out and that's going to kill me because at this point in the game I have four zerglings and if a Nidus pops up in my main and I don't notice it, I am screwed. Um, so there's an argument, guys. We can make a really small adjustment to be safer against this in future. Rather than watching all the way out the side for air units, like in the other matchups, just sit this Overlord like here. Because then you're going to be able to see all this prime Nidus real estate where people would normally Nidus. Technically, there'll be a small gap there, but any units rallying between your hatcheries might even see it. So down here is usually where they're going to Nidus. So if I just by default leave this Overlord here, I'm going to spot the Nidus and run over and kill it with my Lings, pull some drones and queens if I need as well. And if we delay that first Nidus, it'll give us valuable seconds to get out some more units. Ooh. What can I say, guys? Uh, the 80s taught me a lot. If you make cool sounds, you can probably fight good. Okay, guys, so we covered a lot today. Uh, a lot of how to deal with weird, crazy stuff from our opponents. I think this is what a lot of people would have been calling for since we dealt with so little weird stuff in Bronze and Silver. So I think this and the Bronze Silver episode hopefully complement each other really well. And in Platinum, I'm sure we'll get more of a mix onwards as we're going to let people absolutely freestyle and do whatever the hell they want. We, talk, we learn how to deal with Mass BC. We learn how to deal with Liberator Harass. Um, we talked a little bit about how basically just memorizing your build and building habits and building muscle memory is paired with the minimap. The more you're able to just kind of know what you're doing, you can glance at your screen, give a command, and then go back to glancing at the minimap. And then look at the screen, do the next command, glance at the minimap. And that's a habit you guys are going to be building over time. We'll talk more about that. But just keep in mind, it won't happen overnight. And there'll still be situations where you're panicky or you're unsure what to do and you have you lose map awareness you lose build awareness and situational awareness the way you fix that is by studying replays and just coming up with these little reaction lists you're like i panicked from the liberator harass and you're like okay cool bam you know and you know what i like to add at the end of each of these like do do this do this do this always do a macro cycle after dealing with anything difficult in starcraft always go back to dealing with a mac to do a macro cycle it's massive okay um, we talked about how to deal with the 12 pool proxy racks and proxy gates. Now, actually, I should go back. Actually, we want to really... Oh, yeah. So so the one weird one... So this is really uh, talking about, like, three racks, four racks marine rushes. The four gate zealot that we played against. They're rushing with Ling Bane on one base. We didn't play against one base uh, Zerg at all. But you guys saw the general response, whereas we also saw the one base play. And there was games like with the Proxy Reaper Hellion, which was kind of an in-between play, where we ended up kind of going halfway between these two. So remember, with the one base play, we basically ended up being usually about 30 to 35 workers at the point when we get to 330, often about 35 workers, and we go, ooh, they don't have an expansion, and we'd mass units. We'd make Lings, we'd make a Bane Nest. We had that fantastic game versus Senju on Neo Humanity where we showed this. And we, I, oh, we we lost our natural and like 20 drones and barely survived the one base attack. And it was a very close game all throughout, which could have gone either way. That was a great game where if we were a little bit quicker at swapping to army production and taking a better fight, probably would have been even better, right? Just about cleaning up your build and hitting things tighter and tighter and taking those fights really carefully. But we've got these nice little reactions that we've built in now that will keep you alive. But you've always got to adapt after the initial response so learn to understand each situation individually a little bit and just build up your knowledge of what's going on, right? Um, we talked about, of course, also control group stealing and how bloody brilliant was splitting up our Zerglings for our run buys and multi-pronged attacks today. It was massive. It was absolutely massive. So I really hope this helps you guys out. The spine crawler helped save us in Zerg versus Zerg a few times as well. Um, and the Overlord Sacrifice is something we're really going to need to start doing every game in Platinum League. We only did it a few games in this session. So we're going to try and work on that Overlord Sacrifice in a big way in Platinum. 
stay tuned for that one. I hope you guys found this session helpful. Thanks for watching. See you in Platinum League. Bye.